All right. Let me adjust the music a little. Mm. You don't want this. You will find the music credit there on the video. It's really somber. It's tavern music. Mm. It's a whole playlist of tavern music. It's very somber. Like somber tavern funeral music. <laughs> oh, my bar just died. Well, dude, can you just not complain about <laughs> no. I found uh I found some YouTubers that offer uh copyright free music playlists and this one came up as Ooh. Tavern and I'm like, hey oh something you've been wanting. I like so. taverns. I like tavern music. This is a beat. I like this one. It's very light and eerie. When I was uh younger Hi. um on the early days of the internet when chat rooms were all the rage you could go in and, and create like you know those temporary chat rooms i think it was on msn chat mm -hmm. um and uh every night i would go on and i would create my chat room and it was my my online persona's name tavern at the mm -hmm. time and i it was a it was an rp chat um, so I was the, the tavern owner and then other people would come in and it had gotten fairly popular amongst a certain crowd. They were waiting for the tavern to open every night. Hmm. Um, but I could, uh, I, I had a, a scene that was set and I could send people out on little adventures and things. Quest. I like yeah. it. So you were playing D D long before. It just wasn't called found. that, yeah. Yeah. So what are we prepping? Uh, so right now I am print prepping some pretty Gardevoir legs. Shapely. They're lined up like a chorus line here. I like it. Like a little can can. Each of them doing a little kick. Doing their little kicky kicks. Yeah, kicky kicks. I guess I should actually get on. Like, that would be helpful. Sorry, I am... Discombobulated. Very yeah. discombobulated. It's all good. Oh, no! Turn that audio off. <laughs> They're like, noobs. Don't you make an echo in here, all. Thank you for so I don't know. It says that I have a viewer. I don't know who's on. It's but if you <laughs> It said that before you. Okay. <laughs> I don't see our normal. I don't see our normal crew, so we might have somebody else in here. Somebody possibly new. If you are, please give us a follow. Um, and welcome. You don't have to talk. You are welcome to just sit and, and watch and chill out with us. If you have any questions, please feel free. We are not scary. Maybe we, scary we are looking. A scary. Maybe scary looking. But that's why we're not on the camera. As you can tell from my previous story, I'm a big fucking nerd. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about any, you know, judgment from me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But then again, God, I started first edition D and D, so not only am I a nerd, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so in my defense, I learned it from someone else. So yeah, that's preferred. what they all say. Oh my God! So my my aunt used to DM, and and that's how I learned to DM. You know, and and, and then I became everyone's DM. But um, but. What she did, I, I went away to college, I played d &D. So was it always her hobby, or was it Richard's hobby that she... It was their hobby. Because their they hobby. were in the army, and um, they learned how to play with other people. Okay. Uh, it, it was army nerds, which is awesome. Um, means that no matter where I go, 
even if like I'm in a field that I probably don't feel like really comfortable in, I'm still gonna find nerds and I'm gonna be comfortable. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, no, they were in the army. He was in communications. He had actually been to Vietnam and all that. He this was after he came back. They had a group that they were stationed with, and they just played D and D. And they have all these really awesome stories about their group. So when we came to stay with them, um, I was 11. I was a new 11. And it was just really a way for us to go through different scenarios mm. and kind of learn some coping mechanisms because, you know, really messed up 11 year olds. And, um, you know, it, it was it was really cool. It was a, a good opportunity for us. But, um, a, a safe space to express yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I'm already hoarding. I am a dice hoarder. I'm a dice goblin, gremlin. Rah, I just want the shiny math rocks. The clackies. The clickety clacks. So I have already uh, started hoarding so dice. So I have, I, I, I recently heard, and I don't know how much truth there is to it, that, uh, the whole, and, and I don't want to alienate a whole section of people that um, we're going to alienate are, them. Are, are all about it, but uh, apparently some of the goblin lore mm -hmm. has some anti-Semitic roots. Yeah, it's it's because of the way they're depicted. And yeah. I mean, it's like the, the birds aren't real is apparently anti-Semitic, and yeah. it goes back. And it's rough because you, you see these like things that are are fun and enjoyable and not at all and then co-opted by nasty people exactly and, and so yeah everything. i just want to put out like that side of it is not reflected here like when we when we reference the goblins and goblin brains yeah. and stuff like that that is not a factor um but but i have been trying to move towards maybe like the the dragon yeah the dragon aspect you know my shinies I'm going to lay on top of my shinies. But, you know, I heard that and that was very disheartening. I'm like, come on. And it makes sense because you got to look at the the Jewish people Yeah, have are very community minded. Right. And in their religion and in their community, you know, in, in their the way that they handle like their group, um, they take care of even the least amongst them. So yeah. if they're going through a hard time. They make sure that even the least amongst them has what they need to kind of get through it. Right. And when you have other communities that are around them that don't necessarily uh, subscribe to that that belief, you know, it's, it's me and mine and <laughs> yeah, whatever. You, you make me look bad. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> it looks like from the outside that they have so much more. Yeah, yeah. And that's not the case. They may be struggling the same way everyone else is, but because they are taking care of each other, the person at the top is really giving more and for you know, is really we we in the US think that communism and socialism they're bad words. But but that's just basically taking care of your community. It's making sure yeah. that everyone has what they're what they need. Not necessarily what they want, but not what they need to survive. Right. And I think that's a really great way to run your community. It means oh, that definitely. everyone, you know, everyone's taken I, care I of. I think in the age of globalism that, that we've come to with the way that our social media is and everything like that, we've lost that smaller community aspect. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that <laughs> that global connectivity of... You know, the internet at your fingertips has created a nihilistic. Yeah. I don't think we were meant to know See so much. everything that's yes. supposed to happen. Like, y you can stay aware of what's happening in your community and maybe the communities around you. And you can try and make those communities a better place right. with your actions, your words, your deeds, all of that fun stuff. But I don't think I'm supposed to know all the atrocities that are, that are happening in another country. Yeah. Outside of now, how yeah. I, I mean, there. I think that's a double-edged sword because I feel like not knowing how others are running, yeah, put us in in the states oh, the yeah. way we are, yeah, because 
the government fed us that it's everybody so outside of us is doing horribly. Oh, We're yeah. the ones that are prevailing, yeah. you know. And then you you look at Canada and it's like, oh, people aren't waiting on a three year wait list for cancer treatment. <laughs> that mean, was a lie. You mean <laughs> not going to go bankrupt space. just because we went to the doctors for one thing? What? You know, cancer is not a death sentence. I but don't yeah. know how to deal with that. But yeah, I think we have lost that sense of the, the tight community. Um, yeah. And and that sucks. Yeah, but I, I think that's one of the reasons why they kind of get the short end of the stick is because this is part of their, you know, their, their belief system. And we, we are just human beings in yeah. general. We, we see people who are doing better than us and we're just like, why? Why are you doing this? Yeah. yeah why are you doing this to me? And... I want what you have! Exactly. Yeah. And, and then bad things happen because... Somebody else got help and I didn't get the help, so the help sucks. Exactly. And it's that's like, no, the help the doesn't stereotypes. suck. It's... It's awful. It, it really is. Yeah. It's not fair. It's definitely not fair, but you know, you see, you, you go through hard times and you see other people and they're not necessarily going through the same hard time and you wonder why, mm -hmm. you know, and so there's distrust, there's jealousy, there's envy, there's all sorts of negative emotions. Well, the thing and is, is right, that, you know, it, I think it's not even just at the personal level of seeing it. It's yeah. at the higher level of, wait a minute. Those people are going through a hard time, but they're not suffering near as much as I am. And then you exactly. look to your your group that's supposed to be supporting you, and they're not doing shit. Exactly. And so they have to feed a, well, no, they're they're bad people. They stole all your yeah. money. Yeah. You know, they, that's they, why. They own that's the why. banks. That's why. They, they have all the, the money, yeah. and so therefore no one else can get anything else. This is why I can't help you the way that they're helping Anyone, them. No, yeah. I don't think that stands up to under the light. Yeah. You know, when you really get down to, you know, the way that it works. But, I don't know. It's one of the things, I'm, I'm sorry, I do advocate for CRT because I think that we need to know our history. Yeah. You know, even if it's it's unpleasant. But well, I would just say, if, if a person is telling you to hate a group of people, yeah. instead of hating that group of people, I think you need to question why. What They're trying so hard to get you to hate them. Yeah. But it's it's part of scapegoatism. Yeah. Scapegoating, you know. You find, instead of worrying about why your government's not taking care of you, why your religion isn't taking care of you, why your God isn't taking care of you, <laughs> it's, it's easier to just kind of say, well, this is the reason. Yeah. <laughs> These people who have absolutely nothing to do with this, well, it's obviously it their fault. It smells like pickles in here now. <laughs> There's pickle juice everywhere. It's <laughs> just like everywhere I turn, I smell pickle. <laughs> you told me to surprise you. <laughs> it was a surprise. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> motherfucker! Pickle juice in your ass! <laughs> Put this pickle in your mouth and shove it. Oh, oh no. God. So, I have been working since 6 a.m. That's fun. I, so... <laughs> after the little tidbit i'll tell it on stream too so uh i have been having a lot of insomnia issues where tossing and turning and rolling and i can't sleep at night um and then i sleep all fucking day the next day because i'm so exhausted and then i just always feel exhausted um i finally was just like okay i'm gonna try the melatonin and burley had um she had signed up for this thing at uh, GNC because that's where she get, likes to get her protein drinks. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> Not sponsored. Not sponsored. That's just like <laughs> where she, she likes to get them. And uh, they gave her a free sample of melatonin. Do I get chicken sandwich? No, I'm good. To eat on live. <laughs> Not no, sponsored? Those, the, they, the, oh, they're sliders. They do look good, but no, I'm good. Um, if I need anything, I'll crunch away on a pickle. <laughs> I'll stick my head under there so you can all see me eat a pickle. Mm. Um, so anyway, the, the first night I took it... Suddenly we gained 10 followers. <laughs> uh, I It knocked me out. It knocked me out well. Um, and then the second night was last night that I tried it. <clears throat> and I got to a point where it's like when you try to force yourself to stay awake past 
when the medicine is saying no, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I started having some loopy thoughts last night. And uh, one of them was, what if there's a spaceship, but the manual space controls are a bop it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sir, asteroids, (laughs) turn on the manual controls. (laughs) Bop it. (laughs) Twist it. (laughs) Pull it. (laughs) Nice. It's going to go faster, sir. Bop it. Some of these jokes require visual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that just got me giggling. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, I had uh, yeah. stress dreams. Mm-hmm. So I have abandonment issues. <laughs> no. And they manifested last night. I had, um, first I had a dream that me and the kids were living in my parents' old house with my parents because John left me. Of course. Of course. And then I had a dream that, um, I was supposed to go somewhere and I don't remember where it was now. Um, but it was somewhere where Burley was going to go with me and she left without me. Mm. And then at some point during the trip, we're supposed to get on a train and I, and I was trying to get there as fast as I could. And I'm like... You know, are are you guys at the train station? She's like, we're already on the train. And I was just like, (laughs) oh, you son of you bastard. She would do that. She would totally do that. She's such a jerk. (laughs) Why were you on the train? I (laughs) know. The train goes by and she's just in the window. (laughs) What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so yeah, stress dreams. Those are fun. We're on train time now. (laughs) I'm going to put this little mixing ball in here. This will be our little... Yay! That won't at all confuse anyone. No. One of the things that I've learned being married to James is... um, My dreams aren't interesting. (laughs) (laughs) I'll wake up and I'll be like, ha ha ha! Hey, I had this really funny dream, and then like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he doesn't say I don't care. Yeah, but, but it's he gives the, you that look. Of, um, oh, great! You're you, gonna tell me you, about it. Are you done talking now? <laughs> can Can I go back to sleep? Well, that's the problem. Is you're waking him <laughs> up to tell him. <laughs> look, he said I do. That means he does. <laughs> uh, Every single time. Every once in a while, I'll have a decent. Decent dream. Stress dreams are the worst. I, did I tell you about this, the when we worked at the bank together? Mm-mm. I had a dream that I walked into work and it was set up like a sweatshop. <laughs> it felt it like it. like big metal tables and us just jockeying on phones. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ashton was there and Penwell was there. The, the normal crew. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I forget who it was. It was somebody that we, we didn't much care for. <laughs> was it Kayla? Probably Kayla. Maybe. But at some point, they were just like, hey, guys, um, I don't think that the phone splits are right. <laughs> nobody said any. Nobody fucking cared. No. <laughs> just like, guys, I don't think the phone splits are right. And then it's just, no. Nobody cared. Mm-mm. Shut up, narc. (laughs) We just need to get to midnight. That's all we need to do is get to midnight. (sighs) Oh my god. Who knew? Hmm. Twelve years later, still we had the same goddamn job. Didn't you say? No, it was 20 years. 25. 25. Oh, I can't say that because it was terrible. And we might get a TOS for it. Yeah. Let's just say I uh, made some rather uncomfortable comments to coworkers that I had just met. And, uh, <laughs> that does not help. Socially awkward, that, and, uh, that does not help. <laughs> they weren't sexual in nature. They were just, you know, unaliving comments yes. about myself. If I were here in 25 years. And I got a, a, a happy, you know, a little certificate and an extra week of vacation. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. And then go unalive myself and not look back. But now I've got kids. Mm. Now I have to work. 
It was different when I was young and naive. <laughs> Had dreams. <laughs> no responsibilities. <laughs> no responsibilities. Oh, those were the days. I miss those some days. I mean, you know, I've never had a really good quitting story. Mm. Every time I've I've quit a job, I've I've left on good terms. So I've never had <laughs> that storming out of a job story. Burley's got that now. I did that, but it was a Walmart job, and that the Walmart jobs suck. But I left them with an unclosed photo lab, and told my boss to fuck you. <laughs> And I, I got called back in by the manager, and he's like, well, don't leave. And I'm like, well, I told her to go fuck herself. I think I have to leave now. <laughs> and he's like, well, yeah, if you curse in front of customers. Well, well my, not my fault. The photo lab was closed. <laughs> mm. I have no idea what that woman's name was, but Perla from the Walmart store. Fuck you! Like, 20 years later. <laughs> This will reach her. She will know. <laughs> oh, she was awful. Have you ever been fired? Mm. Um, yes. Twice. <laughs> so have I. I have been fired twice. The one, I was just stupid. I was a stupid teenager, and I did something stupid. Mm -hmm. But I was at that job for less than a year, so guess what doesn't go on my resume? <laughs> I don't, I don't think it counts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I was like 18. Mm -hmm. I had to have been 19 because I got that job. It was a part-time job after I got home from basic training. Nice. No, I worked at Suncoast. I was a third key manager. I was in college. And uh, stupid me, at 19 or so, thought, <laughs> no, I'm making a ton of money. And I could just do this instead of, you know, pursuing my art degree. <sighs> anyway, um, my art and religion, because, you know, I'm stupid. No, you were going for an art degree? It was an art history degree with a, um, a focus in religious art and mm. uh, religious history. I was going to be Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized that, that that's not a job. <laughs> <laughs> I could be a teacher, a librarian, or a museum arch or archivist. Arch I can't say that. Archivist. Word. Thank you. Yes. And as much as I like working in museums, those jobs are hard to get because people get oh, yeah. in them and, and they don't leave. They die in them. You you will die in that job. There's no way you are getting out of that job. Excuse me, unless you screw up. So you know, there's that. But uh, and I didn't want to be a teacher mainly because I did not want to talk in front of other people. Um, I, I've just found I, I do not have the... I don't have the personality for teaching. Mm -hmm. Like It would just end up being me ranting about something stupid the entire classroom. And not that professors do do that, but... The thing, like, every fucking job I've done... At some point, management has put me in charge of training somebody. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm just like, I don't have the capability for this. They're like, but uh. you do the job so well. That doesn't mean I can teach. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because mm -hmm. like, the moment I, I explain in... a concept that I feel is a really goddamn simple concept, and a uh. person's just like, what? I'm done. <laughs> My patience has just left. I, I give people, like, three strikes. Like, I if after I've explained it to you three times, you still don't get it. And I will change up the way that I explain it. Because yeah. people, some people don't learn. Exactly. I get you that. Know, I change yeah. that. But if after I've attempted to get you to understand this concept three times, you still don't do it. Oh, this is baseball. Bitch, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> There's no crying in baseball. Just fired. And one of the things that I didn't like about training is that... In every class, they wanted me to recommend who wouldn't make the class. Like, who mm, wouldn't... Yeah, see, I never sat in on a training class. I always... They always put me on one-on-one -on -one training. Mm-hmm. Well, I did that with the Power Rangers. 
Yeah. Not the actual Power Rangers. It's <laughs> <just> a... <laughs> Not the actual Power Rangers. I don't no. think the Pink Ranger's going to cut it. Anyway. But yeah, they did that with me, with them. Mm. But, um. I have to do something other than eating. But yeah, so, uh, Suncoast. Um, so third shift manager, our manager kept falling asleep in the back. And, um, he let the other third key manager pretty much rip off a bunch of DVDs back when, you know, DVDs were like $30 a pop. Well, $20, $30 a pop. Anyway. And, um, I came on and I talked to my district manager and I'm like, hey, our store manager just fell asleep in the back of the room and left us on our own for the entire flipping day. And they came out and cursed us out. Like, he's a jackass. I want his job. And so they fired him right before the holidays. And Oof. they told me that I would have the job if, you know, if I would do it. But it would only be temporary and they wouldn't pay me. Mm. Uh, you know, they, they, they would essentially just pay me my hourly rate, which actually turned out pretty well because making hourly instead of salary. Yeah, you can get the overtime. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. they owed me a lot of overtime by the end of it when they finally moved. Uh, you remember when the Frederick, Fredericktown Mall closed? No. I'm, I'm given out all the information about where we are but it's not like they can't find us um but anyway uh yeah Fredericktown Mall the Suncoast location closed they were liquidating everything they had a store manager they had an assistant manager and I was just like uh are they gonna bring all these people over or are we gonna lose these positions because there are other people in these positions and they're like no 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 if you do the job you'll get the job you know, you'll have the store manager position. And hmm. then they tried to make me sign something that said I wouldn't get the overtime if I took the store manager position. Hmm. And, like, I would like you to pay me for the time that I've worked. Mm -hmm. This so, is wage theft. Well, this is 2000, early 2000s. Yeah. So, you know, we didn't have quiet quitting or anything like that. So, um... They ended up moving the store manager over and they moved uh, her, the assistant manager over as well as a couple of the third keys. So they put me back at a third key manager position. And on top of that, like I wanted, if I wasn't going to get the store manager, I thought I would at least get the assistant manager. The assistant manager couldn't fucking sell anything to save her goddamn life. And it drove me insane because like the whole job is upselling. You know, you've got that one DVD, well, here's what you can do in, you know, as well. You can get this merchandise that goes with that DVD. You can get this other DVD that also goes, that is kind of related to that DVD. You like that movie, you might like this movie. Which is why I know a shit ton about movies. Because that was my job. And, um, yeah, so at that point, they moved her over and I didn't like her and she didn't like me. And, but the, the store manager liked me because I made sales, which is awesome. Um, and we would compete against each other. Suncoast had a rewards card that you had to pay for. It was like $14.95 a year. Got to remember and, those. Yeah. Or maybe I month. had I had the GameStop one. Yeah, they do the same thing. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's the same idea, same people, I think same it was a, companies. GameStop was a year. Yeah. But... <laughs> You'd get like a, a monthly newsletter, and any time that you bought anything, you got reward points. This is, you know, early two thousands is where all these stupid ideas started coming coming around, where you know everyone had their own rewards card, and um, and it was really just to gather information and make you spend more. But um, you get rewards. This item points. is thirty dollars. We're gonna price it at fifty, but pay but charge you, you know, thirty five if you have the rewards mm -hmm. card. Exactly. And so it just, uh, someone left their rewards card, and they were, people were always losing, leaving their rewards cards because they throw them at us, you know, across the counter. There you go, and, you know, scan that. And then you try and give it back to them, and they don't take it, and then you have a whole rewards card for nothing. So when we were selling the, the cards, if we did the spiel and someone didn't take the card, because we had a whole stack of cards, 
I just ended up scanning a whole of them for you know any purchase. So this person that I did not know, I had no connection to, suddenly got a rewards a rewards certificate for like fourteen hundred dollars with no purchases. You know, it, it was just random purchases attached to it. So um, there was an issue with theft in my store, and I never figured out who was doing it. But they always had a short staff where there was only like one person in the store. Mm. So yeah, people were gonna walk off with our shit. Yeah, it happened. But because I bought like the entire series of Lex and um, and uh, I was talking about Star Wars and Star Trek and all that, they immediately assumed that I I watched Battlestar Galactica, and I hadn't at that point. I, I, I hadn't watched it. I didn't know really anything about it. And, um, but because we had a box set go missing and because I was the sci-fi nerd, they just assumed that I had stolen it. Mm. Yeah. And so I got called in by someone who was essentially lost prevention. And like, who, who you know, do you know this person who got the $1,400 certificate? And like, I have no idea who that is. I don't know. And, uh, and they're like, well, you can't scan their cards. And like, okay, well, I didn't get any benefits, so I didn't steal anything. It's one of our members who got the benefit, and I don't know, maybe it'll encourage them to come back and get their card. But, um, you know, I, I feel like you spread the wealth a little. Yeah. And, uh, because they couldn't prove that I had stolen... The Battlestar Galactica, because, you know, FYI, I didn't. I still <laughs> haven't watched the Ding Ding series because it left a bad taste. Uh, James tried to get me to watch it on... Uh, and the memories just flew back. I was just like, no, I didn't steal anything. I can't steal anything. I just have an intense... I'm so good. I'm a good person. No, I'm not a good person. I just, I don't lie very well. It's, it shows all over my face when I do. I do good things almost all of the time. No. I just, I'm a shite, shite, shite li liar. I just, I'm not any good at it. And on top of that, I have an immense propensity for guilt. So. My, my, my brother was the worst liar because he would grin. No. He could not lie without grinning his ass <laughs> off. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the cutest thing. Parents had uh, convinced their kids that when they lie, their nose glowed. And yeah. that only moms and dads could see it. So whenever they lied, they'd cover their nose real quick. <laughs> it's perfect. I wish I was that smart. Or that my kids were that dumb. I don't know. They're too smart. They're too smart. Especially the little one. The, 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 the one. Yeah. Oh, she's so smart. And I, I, it kills me because she she plays the cute card. Like, I'm so cute. And she's cute. Don't get me wrong. She's adorable. But, like, but she's also smart. So just be smart. I like smart. Smart is good. You can be cute. Cute is okay. You know, whatever. But, you know, that's not gonna get too far. You want to be smart. So, I keep trying to convince her that, uh, she doesn't need to do the baby voice. The baby voice annoys me. Mm, I did like, that when I was a little. Like you're six years old and you read at a third grade level. Stop it. My mom hated it. I hate it so much. It's just I don't even know why. It's manipulative. Like she's doing it because she wants something. She's not trying to be cute because she wants validation of being cute. Just, she's doing it because she wants Because something. she's starved for attention. Oh yeah, no, you were the baby. You were the baby. You, I was the baby. The jackass kid. The jackass sibling. <laughs> gets away with everything. Mom, can't yell at me. I, I am not. I'm the yeah. eldest. I was the one who got in trouble for everything. It's my fault. I led them down the wrong path. Scott won't share his plan. Oh my god. Getting triggered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Am I painting this, or am I just really here to talk? Hi, mm. it's Nerdhala. Hi, Nerdhala. Yes. The, uh, Saturdays are our late night streams. Where I we work until are... ten, and then, or, well, no, I work until eight normally, 
And then she makes me come over for 11 to 3. And then we're sleep deprived and giggly. Very giggly. Giggly, sleep deprived, sleep deprived and giggly. Just trying to get, you know, maybe different time zone. Plus we're painting boobies. Look at those boobies! <laughs> jiggly, jiggly, jiggly. So welcome, 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 welcome. Sounds it's like waka waka waka. Wiggity 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 whack. What? Pretty sure that is offensive to someone. Well, that's just wiggity wiggity whack. <laughs> <laughs> I was on Facebook and uh, there's a Ew. vinyl and vel- oh, I'm old. I told you. <laughs> um, there's a vinyl and vellum. It's a page that I liked a couple of their the memes that they posted, but they just get more and more whiny, you know. And a lot of it is is good whiny, like good. Hey guys, we should be looking at slept most of the day. Uh, that would be I nice. I had shit to do today. I didn't really. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I finally put away some clothes like a couple hours before the stream. <laughs> Other than that, it was just my turn to be with the kids while John finally got some work done. Nice. Yeah. He um went and we ordered all of the insulation and drywall put for the workshop. Mm. Yeah, again, I've been up since 5.45. I want to do a workshop tour of where we're at. Yeah. Put that up on tick Tiki Talk. The Tiki Talks. It's uh, Baylight 3D on Tiki Talk. There's only one now. I deleted the other one. There were two. Two's too much. I can't do two TikToks. Two Tiki Talks is too too many. <laughs> if you give me all the passwords, you can go and start your own. With your own password. No, on Tiki Tack. Oh, I already have one on Tiki Tack. Because the other one was tied to my Facebook account. And and I'm not going to, yeah. Give me all your passwords. Well, no, it's just, then you have to swap between Facebook accounts on your devices and shit like that. If you just, if you want to make a Tiki Tack, then you go make your own Tiki Tack. Insulation and drywall. Yes! I need to do that for my studio too. Yeah. Um, so we built a whole ass building. It's going to be out back. Um, it's to move all of our printers into because we have a shit ton of printers. Um, we have, uh, 16? There's noise. That's... No, why are you looking at me? The attic is full. The attic is full. And so we, is we, we, have re- we have reached our capacity on printers and we want more, so... We, we built a building. It's huge. It's hoogy. But it's also going to be my new painting office. It's going to be an office. It's going to be printers. We're going to have resin room to do resin. Prepping. Prepping. Painting. I'm going to have a paint booth Ooh. that's properly ventilated. You're finally going to give me all your <laughs> time lapsed videos. No. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. So we can put them on you the You want to know why I'm not going to do that? Because you keep asking me. I'm no. Fucking ADHD. <laughs> I explained it to James that it was like trying to pull a brick wall through a cat door. Yeah. Like, I want this Dealing stuff with me? done. Oh, both of you. Like, I told um, John that I was giving him the, the, the to-do list because if I gave it to you, you would just get overwhelmed and say no. And then you'd go take a nap. <laughs> You go take a nap and nothing would get done. Yep. So I give him the list. He prioritizes it, albeit very low. So. Anything that I ask for gets on the bottom of the list. Yeah. So I I have executive dysfunction with my ADHD and it it encompasses quite a bit. But um, the the thing to understand about the the thought process in an ADHD brain is that. Paralysis. Me too. Awesome, ADHers. <laughs> My kid has it, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. But um, like washing the dishes. It's not just washing the dishes. Mm-hmm. 
there's a whole litany of steps that have to occur prior to washing the dishes. Because I go in the kitchen and the kitchen's a mess. And I can't possibly focus while the kitchen's a mess. Mm. So I have to put away stuff that's sitting on the counter. And then, you know, there's always the clean dishes that are still in the dishwasher. The, all of those clean dishes have to be put away, which means exactly. that the Tupperware needs to be taken out and flipped upside down so that it fully dries out. And then it can get properly put away and all of the silverware and everything like that. And then I got to take all the stuff. But of course, the there's oven. always other stuff that's on top of the dishes that I got to get out of the way and the dishes need rinsed so there's another step to mm -hmm. it and then it just becomes like you know people are like it's just go, you gotta do the dishes just go do the dishes yeah but there's so much to it <laughs> <laughs> yep. and then there's the other thing that you completely forgot about that you've been putting off for days and then you gotta do yes. that too and then there's the guilt spiral uh -huh. of I, I i haven't done it for so long that now i feel guilty every time i look at it mm -hmm. which makes it painful to do it See, I get into spite where I was just like, but I did it last That's time. That's my life. Yup. I did it last time. You know, so-and-so hasn't done it in a long time. They haven't been pulling their weight, so therefore they have to do it. And I'm not going to do it until they do it. So, oh well. And that is not the way that uh, cleaning should go. <laughs> but. I mean, John, John and I do a good job of, of trying to divvy up chores and bless him he does pull a lot of weight especially when i when i have because i'm also dealing with depression and so when the depression cycles hit and it's even worse um you know he he steps up he steps the hell up and i and i'm very happy with that very See, I thankful I then i feel even so. more guilty that i'm still not doing enough <laughs> i told james and i told sam that i will try and be better but i have a, a problem i understand that there are times where you, you're so depressed that you can't get out of bed and that you can't physically move you want to but you can't yeah you know because you know your brain isn't letting you and i can i can be here and i can be supportive and just say you know take your time it's it's fine I'll, you know I'll, I'll pick up the slack or or do whatever we need to do and be for you to get through this but lynn i expect you to get through it like take take a couple hours and wallow and you know mm. despair and self pity, but then eventually, like if it were me lying in bed, I know that I would immediately go. But if I don't get up, then it's gonna get that much worse. You know, no one's gonna get the kids off yeah. to school, and then I've got to deal. You know, find something. To, I've got to get them to school after they miss the bus, and so that's gonna be more and more work. And so therefore, I just get up. I have to get up. Yep. So I don't understand that that not being yeah. able, like I, I, on one hand I do, and then on yeah. the other hand I don't. And Sam was was spiral, spiraling, and he was just in this sad sack, Sam. Yeah. Um, and well, I mean, so anxiety is one thing, but when it comes to depression and and how depression feels for the person who's in it, you know. I have another one of my, my lovely metaphors of what depression is like. And it, it's like being in a room where no doors and windows and there's just a light. And depression is the light got turned off. And it's like everybody at one point in time finds themselves with the light off. Mm -hmm. We all have down times. Yeah. And then you search along the wall, eventually you find the light switch, you flip the light back on and you go on with it. Yeah. A person with depression, they can't find the fucking switch. And no matter how much they look and search and hunt, they can't find that switch. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is looking in going, I found it. Yeah. It's on the wall. Use your hands and search. It's right there. Mm -hmm. How can you not find it? But to the person with depression, they can't. Yeah. You know? And, and then, you know, I it gets that. into, you know, the antidepressants. You get a candle. Yeah. It's not enough. It's there. It's helping. It's I, not perfect. I got a, you know? a, a good dose of the, uh... Oh. Yes, yeah, Spoon Theory. I actually... Sorry, because I know that it's going to come up at some point in your life. I explained the Spoon Theory to James. Okay. Um, but yeah, have you heard the Spoon Theory? Mm -mm. So, everybody has an allotment of spoons. And people who have 
depression, anxiety, physical disabilities, things like that, they find themselves with fewer spoons than people who don't have those ailments. You know, each ailment takes some spoons away from you. Mm -hmm. And a task like washing your hair costs, you know, three spoons to somebody who's able-bodied and fully capable and they have a plethora of spoons available. Oh yeah, three spoons. Yeah. Somebody who's physically disabled or mentally disabled or something in those lines they have a very smaller, they have a much smaller pool of spoons. So those three spoons a takes a lot from, mm -hmm. from your pile. Mm -hmm. You know. So other people will look at a task and go, oh, it's just this. Just fucking do it. And then the person's looking at their spoons and they're just like, yeah, but I might need these spoons to eat something today. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Like I said, I, I know, again, on one hand I understand it, on the other hand I'm just like, but cope. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I agree. I agree. Everybody should find their way of coping. You know, with my with my anxiety, um, I have medication. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also have techniques that I saw a therapist for a, a period of time to help me find even more grounding techniques to, yeah. to pull myself out of spirals, especially after Sam got hit by the car. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I saw it. Mm -hmm. I heard it. I uh, saw it. Explain who is Sam. Sam is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, it's Sam is a dog. Sam. No, no. Um, Sam, Sam was my dog. She did pass away. Um, the two dogs were out in the yard playing, and they were they had gotten out of control. And I was trying to to recall them back, and they weren't coming back. And then she ended up getting hit by a truck, and I got PTSD from it. And I I'm, I still. There are times where the the feeling I, I go back to that moment I hear it and I feel it and I see it and then that that anxiety rush passes over me and I have to ground myself. Mm -hmm. um, one of my techniques is is funny enough the one that's made fun of the most in popular media the happy place. Oh, no, um, I imagine myself with my dad back at the Kansas concert, and so I just picture myself in the seats, the music. The lights, my dad next to me, I was drinking a Pepsi at the time. Like, mm -hmm. I put myself back in that moment where I was really happy, and that helps ground me and takes me out of that anxiety spiral. Yeah. yeah so, so yes, coping me mechanisms are definitely needed. Yeah. Um, and that's where if you see somebody is having a struggle, it's hard not to think why aren't you finding a way to cope with this? Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. You know, as somebody, I'm not the most patient person either. Yeah. And I'm trying to put myself in a more patient place because I have a neurodivergent kid now. Yeah. So. Oh, oh no, I get it. And like yeah. I said, I'm trying to get better. Uh, she said, I like the five senses grounding, five things you can see, four things you can hear, three yes. things you can touch, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. Yes, I use that one a lot. I never remember the order. <laughs> <laughs> I think I pull myself out of the anxiety spiral by trying, trying to, to remember what the... <laughs> trying to remember what the five, four, three, two, one is, yeah. <laughs> as opposed to actually doing it. <laughs> so you end up tasting five things. Oh... <laughs> Why is she licking the walls? My skin. <laughs> <laughs> the bed. <laughs> she said I mix it up. <laughs> oh, totally. Over. She's licking me again. <laughs> for the longest time, don't lick after windows. after the accident, I couldn't sleep in a quiet room. Mm -hmm. So I spent like a lot of nights out on the couch. And I was very thankful that I had Dean. He's my snuggle puppy. And I don't think he's here right now. No, he left us. Yeah. He, but he's my snuggle puppy. So I would just grab him in my arms on the couch and fall asleep with him, holding him. And he slept there the whole night with me. Yeah. So. And then you got Loki. And then I have Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Healers are independent dogs by nature anyway. That may not have been the greatest idea. He is fluffy. He's he is so, so fluffy, fluffy and he's so soft. And Loki was a very apt name for him. Yes. <laughs> he just paces. Some nights he just paces. And it's because we need the fence. Mm -hmm. 
We desperately need the fence, but we couldn't build the fence before the building because they needed to be able to drive the trucks there. Yeah. I finally <laughs> Don't have like a cat the windows. Again. I'm going to lick the windows. She says, I finally have a cat again. He's my emotional support. Floof. My mental health took a dive without a pet for several years. Yes. Oh, yeah. So um, I told my husband back when we were first dating, I said that eventually when we have a house, I don't ever want there to not be a dog in my house. That dogs are my thing. I fucking love dogs. I love cats too. I have a cat, but but dogs, you know the the happiness when they come home. Also, Isis has ruined all other cats for me. Oh yeah. Because I know I will never have another cat as good as her. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to get another cat while she's still here, so she can train the other cat. I don't know. I had Tora. She didn't train her. <laughs> well, but she was a barn cat, wasn't she? She was. But we did get her as a baby. You can't she train was barn just... cats. It's in their yeah. genes. They, um, they fear. But I feel like we gave Tora the, the nice quiet spot for her to, to exist in. Yeah. And to I hate think everyone in. And I think she was happy just hating existing. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just eating and, and hating. <laughs> that, I, that was... I hate you all. Nom, nom, but... nom, 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 nom. I hate you. <laughs> I really like it when you brush me, but I don't want to let you get close to me. (laughs) (laughs) She was a good cat, though. I could grab her. She never scratched me. The only time Tora ever scratched you was if I was trying to give her a bath and she was trying to get out of the bath. Of course. And she would use me as a a handhold to get out. She wasn't actively trying to just scratch me. Scarlet was 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 the best dog to bathe because she just kind of leaned into me. Oh, like, that's sweet. I like the name Moon. My first dog was Luna. Yeah. It's just Othello, Myra, and, and Scarlet. Really. Yeah. We've had a lot of cats, your your, your your life is a little too chaotic to <sighs> bring a puppy into it at the right moment. Right now. Though the kids have wanted... Uh, they've been asking for a dog, and they've been asking for a guinea pig. So I think eventually we're probably going to give them the guinea pig. Um, if you get a guinea pig, you have to get two. They're a social creature. Yeah. They will get depressed if they don't have a friend. Aww. Yeah. Um, it's like a depressed mop. Yeah. And they need room. Yeah. They need space. My but they're, they're fun. concern is, you know, poor Katie still is dealing with the reactive attachment disorder, still deals with the big feelings. And with Finn now getting the diagnosis of with autism, it's, or the evaluation of autism, um... It's just, he doesn't have the language yet. He's working you, on it. If you want a fluffy pet that is a lot easier to care for than a guinea pig, because guinea pigs can be very finicky. Oh, yeah. They're, they're... I mean, we've done gerbils uh, in the I past. would say a rat. See, I had rats. I had two rats. And they were awful, but they were rescues. They weren't hand-held. Oh, like, yeah. See, I got as mine babies. as babies. Yeah. I got mine as babies, and I held them often when they you were babies. Chinchilla. I would love a chinchilla. Oh, chinchillas are fucking adorable, but again, they they're are so they soft. are a hectic ant. They're oh, yeah. You know, I want sugar, sugar gliders. gliders. They yes. stink, oh, but they're so cool. They stink. They yeah. smell. They they smell like ferret smell. I want a ferret. I've wanted a ferret my entire life. I love ferrets too, ferret. but again, I can't. The smell. I can't Ugh. do with the smell. And uh, with Loki, yeah. there's no way. There's no See, way. I also want a um, a mini pig, but it doesn't matter what kind of mini pig you get. They always end up being big pigs. Oh, yeah. They're going to be a big pig. And I want a big pig. Get a pot belly. Yeah. A pot belly pig can be just like a dog. I know. I know. But having everyone right now where we are with how many people are in my house, there's no way we're going to get a pig. No. There's no, no. way we're going to get a pig or a dog or anything. No. The rats are very sweet, but I got mine as rescues. I got them from the small angels rescue. And that woman lied to me about how old they were and how well handled they were. Because they were not well handled. I had um, one rat who would bite me even if I put my hands in the cage to change their um, their water. Yeah, they were not. food. Yeah, they, they weren't And she would bite enough. me to the point where I would, it would she would draw blood. She yeah, no. absolutely hated me. And I, I haven't done it. All I did was I provided them with soft places to lay and food and water. And, you know, I, would I had a, talk uh, to them. And, I had a gray yeah. one and I had a black and white one, Carmen and Raven. And uh, Carmen, Carmen was the escape artist mm-hmm. who uh, would always pry up the, the cage bars on the top and sneak out. Mm-hmm. And then Raven was the tattletale. 
who would chew on the bars to wake me up so I would go and get her sister and put her back in the cage. In for a penny, in for a pound. We're in this together. Yeah, they're very smart, smart animals. Yeah. But no, I've always wanted a ferret. I always wanted a ferret. And because they're adorable and they're Now, see, fun. Your, your, your experience with rats was my experience with ferrets. Uh-huh. I had, I, my, our neighbors growing up had ferrets that were not well cared for. And uh, what? Do you, do you want me to paint? Because I'm not well, doing I can't, anything. I, I just put that one over there because it's booby. I can't Boobies. put that one on. Okay. She's got, she's got nipples. Uh, Dralian, is that it? Was named after a Cirque du Soleil show. She was my little circus freak. Aww. I went to Kuna with my. This friend. sounds like a fake story. No, it's it's. I went to Kuna, I, I Kuna. with Kuna. a Sherpa. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's K O O and then something and then A. I don't know what that that second to last letter is, but Kuza. It's Kuza. a Z. That's it. Not N. That's why I said it that way. Yeah. Kuza. But uh, it's a Yakuza. <gasps> Kuza. Kuza. And it was awesome. And I keep t- thinking I need to take the kids to a Cirque du Soleil Kuza. show. There's also the Land of I Many Ponies. I feel like Dexter would hate the circus. Well, I feel like Donovan Cirque would have Soleil. a blast. But I feel like Dexter would hate it. He hates anything that's not Roblox or Minecraft. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Every time I come <laughs> over here, he's in front of the computer and I'm like, hey, bud. He loves it. Now... Like I said, uh, Aunt Sarah had gotten him a um, one of those little toy circuit boards. The one that I sent you. It's like a yeah. beginner, kids beginners. He is named after Dexter's Lab. He is. Yes, he is. Um, I, ever since I was young, I wanted a son and I wanted to name him Dexter. And then I'm like, yes, I have a, a kid with a unique name. And then I go to work and my work buddy has a friend with a kid named Dexter. Ha. <laughs> Same age. <laughs> no, but that's why we named Phineas Phineas. Be- not because of Phineas and Ferb, but everyone assumes that. No, it's because of Phineas Waldorf Steele and or, or a.k.a. Dr. Steele, who is a steampunk musician. And um, But we wanted to give him a, a unique name so that way he'd have the heads up. You know, Phineas hey. is a name you're going to remember. And then I saw his kindergarten list of kids, and uh, everyone had that same thought. They're all unique names. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And some of them are the unique Y O O N I K Q U E, where they spell it weird. And that's fine for them. Well, one of his classmates but, I had to research. Um, and I don't, I, like, I want to say the name, but I feel like this is such a unique name, it might. Mm-hmm draw too much attention to her but if you google it you get the reference for it not her um it was enzinga hi um and i just i'm looking at that name yeah, and i'm like where is a generational thing i was like where did that come from enzinga mm-hmm. she was a queen in africa mm-hmm. she was queen enzinga that's what she was named after and i was like oh i uh, i found a list of names that i was considering when we were pregnant and, uh, oh, it could have been so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first one that I proposed to James, and James is in the chat room now. Hi, James! Um, he is the hub of the hub and bub. But, um, the, the first, I, th- I think, name that I proposed that he agreed to was Remington. But he liked Remington, and I liked Remy, because I have a thing for Gambit, and will always have a thing for Gambit. Sorry, husband. You're not Gambit. <laughs> I mean, you could dress up like him, I guess, but... Hello, husband. Hello, wife. Oh, he's just so pretty. <laughs> so, yeah. Though, he wasn't pretty in the freaking... Uh, oh, God, which one? The new X-Men movie? They made him so cheesy, and I don't like that. I want him to be all cool and sensual and crap. My first nerd crush. The only Gambit throws the playing cards, doesn't he? What? Yes, yes, he does. So the only comic I ever read him in is the Deadpool meetup team up 
comic. Okay, okay, okay. But you watched the the old '90s X Men cartoon. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, yeah. not really. What? No. Oh, nerd card revoked. No, <laughs> I didn't get into Marvel until I was older because my dad was a DC fan. Oh, okay. So okay. I grew up DC. Yes. I mean, just a different kind of nerd, but okay. <laughs> well, less. Yeah, I grew up on, like, the Adam West Batman. Okay, okay. Yeah. Adam West. Adam West. I mean, Adam I'm gonna get Weast. all the A's out of my body. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Adam Weast. <laughs> <laughs> or Adam Wee. Adam Wee. <laughs> Cat slingshot. <laughs> oh God, I, he needs to come back. He just needs to be alive again. I know. Oh well. I. I mean, I'm not saying I don't appreciate the pretty boys, but you know, you're the only pretty boy for me. But you know, he is my first husband, so. I like some pretty boys. Just not most of them. Yeah. I like beards. I like facial hair. But clean he's, shaven. No, he's when not. He was when you guys first got married. Yeah, when we were dating. You had like the baby face. When we first did dated. No, he, he had the goatee did when we got married. I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. Huh. I don't recall. I'm going to have to see your wedding pictures again. Bring them forth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you cleaned it up. Yeah, well, obviously. Am I supposed to remember more than ten years ago? Torment oh my god, I want him to be with Brienne so bad. I want him to have big giant babies. And I feel like the fact that they just left that alone and did not address that, that's, that's worse than having uh, uh, Danny go crazy. And, you know, yeah. that ending. The fact that they just left Tormund completely single and Brienne, like, she, oh, why does it have to be Jamie? Like, Jamie doesn't season. deserve her. Huh? Final season. Yeah. Okay, so I would have been slightly, slightly, I wanted her with Tormund. Uh, yeah. Like, I wanted her That's with Tormund. But I would have dealt with the Jamie thing yeah. if he hadn't run his ass back to Cersei. Oh yeah. Here's I wanted Cersei to be killed by Arya wearing Jamie's face. That was That's awesome. what I wanted. But Jamie Cuz the prophecy kept her, saying well, the prophecy kept saying that she was going to be killed by her brother. Yeah. She gets buried under some fucking rubble. Yeah. That's not that the, that's the one part of the the prophecy that wasn't fulfilled. Yeah. No, it needed to be Arya wearing Jamie's face. That would have been cool. That would have been epic. Yes. But her killing Littlefinger was pretty epic. That was great. That was okay. Could have been better. I think Sansa should have had that kill. And see, and that's what they're kind of setting it up for in the books. Is that he? She knows she's being manipulated by Littlefinger, but at this point, this is pretty much the only thing she has because already, uh, oh god, what is his name? Uh, it's not Baratheon. It's the other guy, the the other North North Northerner, the guy who makes poor what's his face a uh, half man, like eats his downstairs. Ramsey? Ramsey, thank you. Um, Bolton. There you go. Bruce and Ramsey Bolton. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Don't let her, I mean, we, we want people to listen to it, but I mean, it, it's been a couple of years. <laughs> you know, speed up. You can watch at least <laughs> two or three episodes and get through it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, like, no, I was I was creating my whole D and D world, and they kept laughing at me and saying, "Hey, that's like Game of Thrones," and I'm like, "Well, but it's just based off of medieval whatever, whatever." And I'm like, "No, no, this is Game of Thrones." So they made me read the books, and now every time I do anything D and D wise for that particular world, I'm like, "Am I coming up with it on my own?" 
based off of his history. We are all, we are, every single thought that we have is affected by something that we have seen, read, oh, yeah. or watched. Including your dreams. Yes. People that you see in your dreams, you've seen them in real life. It's yes. really creepy. Okay, so I was thinking about um, thoughts that live in your head rent free. Uh, years ago, Facebook was an advertisement for some uh, something how to um, how to clean your dishes better, and it wasn't with a, a sponge or something. My homebrew world is a mashup of all my favorite cartoons. That would be awesome. So the the mashup I want to do right uh, next time we get to finally play D and D is my bard. I want to play Danny Sexbang. Oh my god! And John's gonna take levels in, in uh, Ninja and be Ninja Brian. It's gonna be so terrible. It's gonna be you're, amazing. You're gonna, you, you think it's gonna be amazing? You think it's gonna be amazing? And then you're actually gonna have to do all the gameplay, <laughs> and it's not gonna be quite as cool as you thought it was. It's gonna be fucking amazing. And then there's gonna be me again DMing all this nonsense. It's fucking science. Just ask Albert Einstein. He invented space. Anyway, intrusive thoughts. Not intrusive thoughts. Uh, things that live right for you in your head. Yes, anyway, yes. Commercial for a different way to clean dishes. And I don't even remember the commercial or the different way to clean dishes. All I remember is this naughty little comment. You know, can you imagine... Using the same germ-filled sponge every time and expecting your dishes to get ma made clean. And it was just a random person commenting on the commercial. But because of her snotty little comment, I don't remember what they were actually, like, how to better clean your dishes. I just remember, I think about that every single time I go to wash a dish. And I use a goddamn sponge, because that's how God intended it to be. I like the, um, uh... I forget the name of it. It's the washing up gun. I like this already. <laughs> <laughs> that was a paper towel commercial. I don't know if it's... I, like, again, I don't remember anything about the commercial. It's just a different way to do dishes. And I don't like dishes anyway, so I was watching it going, Oh, maybe I can use this. But, again, went to comments and snotty. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, the washing up gun, he's like, you know... It's, it's filmed like an infomercial, and he's like, get this gun! And he's like, bang, bang, bang! And then it pans over, and the dishes are all busted up, but they're clean. I love it! <laughs> I love it. So, uh, she said, my homebrew world is a mashup of all my favorite cartoons. Oh, no, we already did that one. I made a monk based on the little girl that beat up Bill Hader in the show Barry. 12-year-old badass. Uh, which... I don't know why that makes me remember uh, Dan Dan Levy Levy Eugene Levy. So yeah, Eugene Dan Levy. Levy. Yeah, but his son Dan. Oh, Dan. Oh, he was I in just know Schitt's Eugene. Creek, and I absolutely love him. And I watched a, a commercial for uh, like a scene. No, it was not Sangria. It was some. I don't know. I don't care. It was a Thanksgiving Friendsgiving sort of commercial, and he was adorable in it. And I love Dan Levy. That's that. That was a nice. That was a whole story, and I don't care. I it, mm, nope. That was a nice thing that you just said. He's so cute. He's such an adorable man. But uh, I'm a dumbass, by the way. Yeah. Tell me I, something I didn't know. It, <laughs> you would not believe how long it took me to realize that Jack Quaid was Randy Quaid's uh son. They look just like each other. <laughs> put the quaid together <laughs> wow you, just, you have some good looking jeans there why do i always think of uh you know this other person every time i think of you oh, that's right because you share jeans oh awful awful <coughs> anyway but yeah i i sobbed like a crazy person at the end of schitt's creek because it was such a good ending i never watched it oh why I don't know. But then again, I, I haven't watched Supernatural or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Excellent watch. It's fucking hilarious. Supernatural. It's a terrible show, but I love it dearly. It's not good. It's like... It's uh, great. It's amazing. But it's also terrible. Craft. What was it? Charmed. Fucking watch the shit out of Charmed. 
Jensen, listen, Jensen, Jensen is a fantastic actor. He is amazing. He does great in every role that he has. Jared Padalecki, he's okay. He he was he's a nice Sam because he had Jensen. Not nice. Okay, listen. (laughs) Yes, he is. He was fantastic in the boys. Um, he's just he. I love that he got to to stretch his his acting abilities there. Um, so in the later seasons, I think Jared just loses his ability to breathe. Right, <laughs> he gets very breathy. Every scene is like. <sighs> He's just very breathy. And I'm like, okay, come on, man. Spit, spit the line out. Let's stop. <laughs> but it, it's what happens when you focus too much on your breathing. Yeah. I do it when I'm on, on calls. And, you know, I'm sitting there talking to someone. And I'm like, I haven't taken a breath in a long time. Like, nobody <laughs> hates. <gasps> but I'll tell you, nobody hates Supernatural more than the Supernatural fans. Yeah. We, we hate, love this show. But I love it. Especially the first five seasons. Even if that's all you watch is the first five seasons, it's worth it. Because mm-hmm. that's the, the real monster of the week type thing. Yeah. And then after that, it... it you're, you're invested at that point. Kripke so left. Anyway. Yeah. Kripke, yeah. Kripke left after season five. Um, and Kripke also did The Boys. See, I have and that's to why up. I stopped watching The Walking Dead after, like, the fifth season. Yeah. Um, and, but I was still reading the, the, okay, uh, she said One through four are fantastic. You should watch them. They... Like, I, I get it that you wanted to skip to Castiel. 100% understand that. Love him. I met Misha. I've hugged Misha. He's fantastic. I love him to death. Um, but you need to, one, you gotta watch the first few seasons. They're great. Sorry, go ahead. Somebody else has seen Supernatural. So that's this whole thing. Oh. We're done. No more painting. We're t- <laughs> <laughs> no, paint more. Ugh, I want a snack. I brought chips and a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> you did bring a pickle. I smell it everywhere. Eat the pickle, eat the pickle. Again, we're trying to reach some of that other audience. Oh, it's a pickle. <laughs> it's a we get done with the boobs. Too. Exactly. Ugh. And you're painting your green. Yeah. Kind of like a pickle. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Kid did something so cute. So cute. Oh no. Uh, James had picked him up and was, you know, flying him around. And he said, put out your arms, put out your arms. We're going to do Superman. He goes, no, I don't want to put up my arms. And uh, James was taking him over to the, the shelf where, like, in the kitchen where there's uh, chocolate. And he says, well, you got to put out your arms or else you get no chocolate. So immediately his arms just shot out like Superman. Because he's going to get the chocolate. And he's the chocolate. So, ugh. He picked up a couple bags of raisins, I think. Raisins? No, the raisins. Raisins? Yeah. <laughs> like, I got one bag and he got the rest. <laughs> it's cute, but we should really be discouraging it because he will literally run up to us, grab things out of our hands, and then run away giggling. But it's really cute, but it will not be cute when he's like 10 grabbing food out of our hands. Donovan was being very quiet and we went to check on him and he had hid a bunch of uh, lollipops under his bed. So. What was the thing that Burley was telling me he had kept taking back to his bed? Oh, the butterscotch chips Mm. for my my pie. He didn't know how they got there. They just got there in his underwear drawer. (laughs) I feel ya. I frequently have butterscotch chips just show up in my undies. I don't know how they got there. I'm gonna anyway. eat them. <laughs> gonna totally eat them. I mean, they're my undies. I get to eat them, right? <laughs> Finders keepers. <laughs> Losers weepers. Aww. Anyway. Uh, I used to eat raw pasta as a kid and would hide boxes of macaroni in my room. 
my sister was really, really allergic to peanut butter. And she didn't, she don't care. Uh, we'd grab the peanut butter container and take it to the room and just sit in the middle of the room and eat it. And I think this is maybe why I learned, this is my youngest sister, I learned from her that, you know, allergies are just mind over matter because fuck that. If I want it, I'm going to eat it. And that's why I eat And that's kiwi. why your mouth bleeds every time you eat kiwi and you still eat it. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't roll me. I'm the boss of my mouth. Um, my vice when I was little, little was butter. You used to eat butter? I would just go and like dip my finger in butter and eat that it. That explains so much. Why I'm fat? Yeah. And, and, and maybe a little slow. That, I'm not that slow. You, you you eat butter. Used to. Feel like it. Well, I mean. Now I put it on bread, so at least there's a vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> But my mom would go to get butter out of the fridge and there would just be finger marks in it. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you were very frustrating as a child. I was. Yep, that's why I think your mom is just waiting for a replacement child. And that's me. I'm gonna show up and be like, I have all these craft things that I needed to do. Fix them for me. Okay, so I finished two of the snowmen. And I, I posted them on, on Facebook, uh, I th and I, I think I bombarded you with them. But um, the the first one, I think I overstuffed, and it just looks worried. <laughs> He's cute. I don't know what your problem just, with him is. It just looks very worried. And it, I like what I did with the, the zooming in of the face and then to the eye, and it's just <laughs> this black hole. Like, your god can hear you, <laughs> cannot hear you here. But, um... But, so that was the first one. It's it's really overstuffed. If you, you hold on to it, it just feels like kind of like a hard stuffy because it's got so much fluff in it. The second one, I didn't stuff as much. I left it. Hard kind of stuffy? Of that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Better than being a hard stiffy. <laughs> but, but yeah, so. Jen and I play that game whenever we watch I Shouldn't Be Alive. And it was like. He, all he had to survive in the, uh, in this, um, oh god, this, uh, lifeless winter sh scrub. And I'm like, lifeless winter scrub was my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you don't have any friends. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So I should have brought him over so you could, like, see them and, and see which one looks better. But I, think I just think they're cute. And I'm not going to stuff them as much as I stuffed the first one. Yeah, and that's fine. And here's the thing, is that you're giving them to your kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to love it no matter what. I don't know. I kind of feel like some of them are like, why did you give me all these? Because I'm not going to be done until like, they're in their 30s. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I may have a slight problem when it comes to crafting where I have an idea Oh, like, it'd be really cute to make ornaments each year for the tree, for the, the kids. So that way they can have, like, little little felt ornaments that are embroidered with their name and the year on them. And I'm like, okay, but then I should probably do that for all the kids, not just the kids who live with me. So there are seven children in my immediate family. My sisters both had three kids. I had one. And so, but well, that was your first mistake. My keep, I'm no the making them for all of the kids in the family. Well, yeah, but four of them live with me now. So I have to do it for all four. And the fifth one is looking like she's coming back, which is cool. But I don't want to leave her out, even though she's an adult. She still feels like a kid. Like I look at this twenty-two-year-old, and I'm like, "You're still a fetus. Stop trying to be an adult." <laughs> Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it. You my my it. nephew, my nephew is in college, and See, that's ridiculous to me because I remember he was like a little thing. Yeah, like in my head, head, he's still two. Exactly. Anytime I think of him, he's two. That's why during uh, Finn's first birthday, my my friend Lauren came over and like she had her her kids with her, and she had her oldest. And granted, they are short women. I don't think she's more than five foot nothing. And her kid is even shorter than her. And so the last time I remember seeing a picture of her kid, her kid was like 13. 
And I'm like, so, hey, how you doing? It's been a couple of years. You're like, what, 15 now? She's in her 20s. She's just a tiny woman. And I felt like a jackass because she's a full-ass adult in the Coast Guard. Every once in a while, Dexter runs up to me and I'm like, who the fuck are you? Oh, yeah. Where's my little kid? I've started demanding that Robot Phineas tell me where he hid Baby Phineas. Um, it's like, I am Baby Phineas. Did I tell you, are you aware that Dexter wears the same size shoe as me? <laughs> yes, you did tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> and I borrow his shoes a lot? <laughs> <laughs> you you could have left that one out. Well, he's got these really nice uh, fur-lined slippers that I bought him that he never fucking wears, so I might as well wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember when I used to walk in the house and he'd go, Miss Kelly! And immediately bum-rush me. Now it's Donovan. And that's cute, too. But, I don't know. Like, I remember... Dexter being a, just a chubby little mm. toddler. Well, Dexter was the chubby little thing that called everybody Kelly. Yes. Have a good night. Your hell is going. Bye, ladies. Have a fabulous night. I'm crashing. See you later. Have a Enjoy. good night. Thank you for stopping in. But yeah, he did call everyone Miss Kelly, including your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> oh well not that time I mean he saw you every week yeah I lived even further away than I do now <laughs> I don't know but I didn't have any kids but yeah little baby Hulk tossing over all the tables Things change so fast, though. They grow up so quickly. I don't like it. Make it stop. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping. Oh, and I need the chronotons or whatever they are. I can't remember what they are. Into the future. Timey wimey. Wibbly wobbly. Jeremy bear me. Jeremy Have you seen bear me. Have you seen A Good Place? I have. I've watched the, all the seasons. I think there are four seasons. Yeah. It, it was really good in the beginning, and it, it had a really good ending. Yeah. It kind of slumped a little bit in the middle, but it's yeah. still pretty good. Still pretty good. I love, um... I bawled. What's her I name? cried my eyes out at the ending. I cried during um, Parks and Rec, the ending for that, yeah. where they're like, hey, everyone had babies. And I think at that point, when I was watching it, I was maybe pregnant. I'm mm. like, <gasps> I want twins. But I don't want twins. Mm. But, yeah, I no. don't. So, my aunt pulled a really scary thing during Thanksgiving. As soon as my sister came in, and then she got up and went to talk to uh, Abby to call her back to the table. My aunt goes, is she looking a little, uh, round? Like, no. No, she is not. Because if she's looking round, that means that there's another baby, and I, I can't raise a baby. I'm almost 40. So, no. You'll have to give that one to Burley? Yeah. Come and collect it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Like, so she got back to the table, and everyone's like, hush, hush. No one's going to say anything, and I go, hey, are you pregnant? <laughs> I'm not beating around that bush. <laughs> Unless I'm literally beating around that bush. <laughs> so, get rid of that baby one way or another. So, you know, we were all joking around about how we we're going to trip her down the stairs. This is awful. We're going to lose all of our followers. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have two very short flights of steps broken up by a landing. So nothing's going to happen. We're going to have to do it a couple of times. <laughs> so, yeah. But, no, she said, I'm not, I'm not pregnant. I'm just fat. I'm like, I know that. I know that feel. So, meh. Has anybody checked in with the other one? The other sister in a while? 
no, but I, I don't think she's gonna. So, I need to talk to her because apparently she's gonna be possibly shacking up with the, the gentleman that they share between them. Yeah. Yeah, that was a rumor. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true. It's just a rumor that some people have seen them together. So the the thing is I talked to her eldest to say, hey, you may want to give her a heads up that uh, this accusation is pretty credible. And uh, so she doesn't, doesn't decide to move in when Sam mm -hmm. moves out. No one knows what I'm talking about except for the people involved. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. My life, or at least my family life, is a Jerry Springer show. If Jerry Springer was still in the air. Jerry, Jerry. But, oh well. Alright. Um. I think I need to hit the restaurant, so we're gonna take a quick break. What? So I'm gonna.
James sent me paper oh towel commercials. It's it's just one of those things that's always gonna live in my head rent free. Every time I pick up a goddamn sponge, it's gonna be like, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't even know the the product anymore. You you've ruined it for me. I'm never gonna buy this because it's just <laughs> awful. Awful. Anyway. Andy Toot! You have painted exactly one third of a Gardevoir. <laughs> so much for this being a painting stream. <laughs> Did you even restart the timer? No, no, okay. I'm, I'm, yo, oh, I need to restart my video. <laughs> ah, ah. Getting there. There's a lot of green. <laughs> <laughs> video <laughs> or things with that uh that sound <laughs> nope that's not how it ends i don't know paint. and another <laughs> yeah paint faster paint a booby so they're shiny all right we need to copy this Copy to clipboard and paste. Pop. Thank you for joining. If you are new here, say hi and give us a follow. We're painting Gardevoir figures by Polybitsar, available at www.baylight3d.com forward slash art as DIY kits, primed and or painted. Gardevoir has the safe for work and not safe for work options. If you have a custom order, please reach out to contact at baylight3d.com for an estimate. See something on Thingiverse? We can make it. See it on Cults 3D? We can make it. Maybe yeah. I could paint it. Who oh. knows? Maybe we'll paint it on a streamy. Yeah. You buy we paint. You buy it. We paint <laughs> it. You buy it. We paint it. That's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. The name of the game is painting. Or you buy it and then you paint it. But I have to prep it. Or maybe you do prep. Maybe you do the, the prep rules. yourself. No, them's the rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rule of the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's my I'm, game. I can say the rules. I'm the oldest. I make the rules. <laughs> Pretty sure that's how it goes. If you're older than Kelly, drop a comment. <laughs> 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 I'm painting a god of old. And agree. James is four months younger than I am. So I robbed the cradle. But I was also in the cradle when I robbed the cradle. Um, John is three years younger than me. <gasps> He's a baby. He is a baby. Well, no. I'm Jonathan. That. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not my real husband. John. Okay. I don't know how old Jonathan is. I assume he's very distinguished, no matter where he is. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, Jonathan, if you're out there. <laughs> He's in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> I heard my name, but not my name. I heard half my name, like, part, <laughs> like an extension of my name. <laughs> I I feel like it just falls under the, the Jamathy. Well, yeah. Now you gotta start calling him Jonathy. Jonathy. Jonathan. Did I ever tell you one time... I don't remember if it was at the bank or if it was at the other place. There was a, a person named Jonifer. Nice! <laughs> like maybe he had consumed his twin in utero, and that was going to be Jonathan and Jennifer. So, in memory of the consumed twin. Or they're non-binary. Possibly, but I like my story better. So, nuts suck to it. that. <laughs> so, suck, suck, suck it. Suck. suck it. Suck. She has a thingy on her head. Yeah. Why? I want to do something. I want to do something. So, do something. Paint her. Paint her! Uh, you got to paint around the boobies. You got to paint around the boobies? Yeah, her, her sleeves and the shirt are, are green, but her boobies are out. Mm. Her boobies are out, Kelly. 
The cool thing about the Gardevoir is a Polybits figure, the not safe work, is a different pose. So if you haven't already, go to our, our website there and uh, take a look and you can oogle the boobies. Oogle the Here's boobies. the most I can show you on screen. This is the base for this one. This is the base for the not safe for work. It's a Pokeball. I put on <laughs> online that, uh, you know, they, they're like, oh, uh, that's like a different girl before than I've ever seen. And, uh, oh no, they were talking about the Yoroichi. Yeah. I'm like, you know, if you, oh, because he was saying, where's my guard, my Pokeball when I need it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I go, you know, you could always get a Gardevoir. Speaking of. <laughs> Increase your menagerie. Menagerie. You, I found out, I'm not a Pokemon person. I, I watched it here and there, but, yeah. I, I'm I just a person, too. Not a Pokemon person? Mm-hmm. Well, mm. I guess that's good. I'm not a Pokemon. You're not a Pokemans? Not part of the Pokemans? Anyway, um... But you can't use Pokeballs once you throw them. They're like, the, the way that they described it is it's like a hand grenade. And once you throw it, it's done. But I, I don't know about that. Like, I feel like in the what? series, they threw them and then they went and retrieved them. I'm sorry, start that sentence over? Pokemans. When you throw a Pokeball at a... Pokemon, you lose Pokemans. the Pokeball if they bust out. You, well, yeah, why? Because them busting out of the Pokeball breaks it. Okay. Well, there were times where they threw Pokeballs at Pokemans, and it just bounced off the head. Boop. Okay, that's just the show. Okay. In the game, okay, it always goes in the Pokeball, and then there's a chance that he's going to bust out. Okay. And the act of busting out of the Pokeball breaks the Pokeball. Uh-huh. Okay, because that, that's what I was thinking, and like, okay, but what you if throw you it have... And it goes, and then it sits on the ground and goes doo -doo -doo. what if for some reason doo -doo -doo. you collected a bunch of useless Pokemon doo -doo -doo. and you let those useless Pokemon go in order to get better Pokemon uh -huh. could you recycle their Pokeball and apparently you cannot no so if you once a Pokeball Carter, is assigned to a Pokemon it is that Pokemon's Pokeball I don't like that I feel like I should be able to evict any Pokemon that I want you can release them you just can't yeah, use the Pokeball weird. again but it's my Pokeball it's like if I have an apartment. And, and then if they bust out, you can, it goes boop. And then it goes doo doo doo. Let a Gardevoir live in my apartment with the express purpose of being my fighting chicken. And then all of a sudden I don't need that chicken anymore. <laughs> you thought. I should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody who likes Pokemon is watching, they get it. Yeah. It, well, it shakes three times. Oh. So it goes. You're not quite on camera. Oh, it goes. And that's how you catch it. Okay. But then I did one, two, three. <laughs> Wait a nerd. Explain that joke three times. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. You're a nerd. I'm not a nerd. Well, okay, maybe. Tom Skull. Tom Skull gag. Oh. Is there a doctor in the house? I'm a doctor. Well, you're a nerd! <laughs> he gets them every time. <laughs> yeah. No one's what? Well, we have people. Huh? I gotta wonder how many of these people are people and how many of these people are bots that are just um, supposed well, to Well, I know up. that the, the one that's owned... Okay, owned, yes. That is a bot. How do you know? Because I uh did stuff. Yeah, I used um their package, their stream thingy, uh to try and and okay, so sparkle one of the up the thing. And people the, who's supposed to be watching us is I just pulled up their uh their profile and they're offline, so I don't think they're actually watching. But how does why do they? Say that they're watching. I don't know, bitch. Google it. Google it. I'm telling. Google it. 
Go, go Google, like, are, why are there people in my Twitch viewer list okay. that aren't online? Well, but then, I can't, no, don't listen to me. I need another tab. Give me another pet tab. Yeah, yeah. Why, why are, are there? there offline people listening to my, to me? Oh, my twi <laughs> this went from... Tell me how this works. It's too. a black Tell mirror. <laughs> what are their voices? Stream. We're not going to be um, listed as an all inclusive. What's up with people following my stream when I'm offline? No, that's not. That's no, the that's opposite. That's not it. We want the other way. Come with Give us the other on. way, Goose. Invisible channel, offline status, stream appear as offline when they're not. I have lurkers farming points. What's what that? that? I've noticed that there are a few offline lurkers that don't watch my streams. They just keep it open to farm points for one of... Ah, oh, we don't do points yet. No. Um. When I go online, they even admitted that that's all they're doing. They keep my stream open. So when I go online, they will collect the points even if they aren't at their computer. It makes me feel bad as a creator that they don't want to watch my content. The idea is to reward watchers slash supporters, not people who just want to use my channel for free stuff while they sit in my channel whether I'm streaming or not. I wonder if there's a way to kick them from the tree the stream when I'm offline. Not a ban, just a kick so people can sit 24-7 to farm for points for free art. They don't earn points while I'm offline, but it's open so when I'm online they are already in chat even if they aren't there. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, makes sense i guess but we don't do do points at this point though we should points are fun um i'm not an affiliate yet oh okay. we need we need more followers more Follow! followers we have 21 followers already how'd yeah. that happen 21 people follow us man <laughs> <laughs> they like us they really really like us Drop us a follow. Let us get affiliate. Then we can do some special shit. <laughs> I see you've been working on this cheer. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote it. I don't know. We had that one person who came from um, from Facebook. So yeah. I feel like if we just keep letting them know that we're here, eventually they and will come. They will come if you build it. I will come if you build it. Yeah. I will come if you build it. I put up a, a story and a post. So they know. And I put up posts. You put up posts. I did. Were they outside? <laughs> <laughs> On the Facebooks. On the book of faces. Ooh, that was interesting. Yep. You're now interacting as your profile. Well... Good. That's nice. Oh, I'm live on Twitch in 15 minutes. Come hang out. I will like this post, but not that post. <laughs> Why? I don't know if I'm liking it as me or if I'm liking it as Baylight. Sometimes when you're interacting with our socials, you're interacting with me. And sometimes you're interacting with Jan. Does Burley do anything? No! She's socially awkward and scared of social situations! Lazy, in other words. No! She genuinely gets anxiety! Yeah, but... Twitch is, really, Twitch is really hard for her! She doesn't know how to act whenever she thinks that people are listening to her! I, I just recently heard something that... And I don't know if I heard it here or if I heard it somewhere else, but, um... It's literally a conversation we had, like, ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're talking about how truly happy people don't laugh that much. Oh, uh, no, it was a it was a video about uh, on TikTok about genuine smiles and how everyone thinks that they're a body language expert now that they've watched, like, body expert videos. But uh, they're like, I could tell what's a true, genuine smile because it has to reach the eyes. Except some don't at all. Yeah. It's just a theory that's already been kind of disproven. So, yeah, no, apparently they're talking about, uh, statistically, 
The people who report being the happiest are also the ones that don't smile and laugh all that much. They just kind of keep the happiness inside. Mm. Like, oh, okay. Wow. Selfish. Way to make me feel inadequate about my happiness. <laughs> well, I mean... I once read a thing that said that people were happiest when they were anticipating something. Mm -hmm. People reported that they were happier leading up to a vacation than they were on the vacation. Yeah. Tell her about the spoons. I already told her about the spoons, James. You weren't here. I told her about the spoons. <laughs> I told her the spoon thing. How does the spoon thing apply to this? Oh, he just wanted me to tell you about the spoons. He's like, I wish I would have recorded you so that you could, so I could have, show it to Kelly because I can't repeat it. It, 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 but no, I explained to him about the spoons in now. the car. I explained to him oh. about the spoons in the car. Oh. He wasn't here for that. So it's just kind of like a... He that. Yeah, okay. it, it was a kawinky dink. Okay. Okay. It just so happened to pull up. Kunky dink. Kawinky dink. Okay. Yeah. Kalunka dunk. It is 1249. Wow. Two more hours to go. Yeah. Should we eat a pickle? <laughs> you eat the pickle! I got the pickle for you! Didn't you get another pickle? No. I got you the pickle. There was just the one pickle. I got all the food! I thought, you got, I thought you got yourself today. a pickle too. No, I got all the food because it's the second time I've eaten today. And I need to get better at that. I need to eat, like, routine meals. Are you guys ready for this? Are you gonna eat it on camera? No. And then we're gonna get all this pervert followers no oh, are you guys ready they're gonna keep popping up here it comes here it comes yeah. <laughs> yuck not you like that fan. not a big fan not a big fan <laughs> you like that yeah brown juice everywhere I, I am almost, um, I almost regret, bong. <laughs> regret getting the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to be an ASMR eating channel. So, we do have chips. One of the reasons why I am the size I am is because I like to eat my feelings. I don't like to eat my feelings. I just do. Oh, no, I 100% do. <laughs> I um, I went on a weight loss journey back in 2019. I actually know. Technically, I started the weight loss journey on New Year's 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, even through COVID, I continued to lose weight. And, uh... I went from over 200 pounds to 180, 180 or 190. I think I went to 190. I was 180 after I gave birth to Donovan. I think I went to 190. And then Scott died. Yeah. And I ate my feelings. So yeah. I gained it all back. Yeah. I went from no soda, now that I follow your really somber, sad story, to... I went from no soda to suddenly eating, <laughs> drinking soda. And then, yeah. My, my losing has uh, plateaued. So, I just need to stop drinking soda. But it doesn't help getting up so early and then going to bed so late. But I feel like all my day is gone to either watching kids and working. Although, I don't know a lot of people who made it through 2020 without something. Yeah, no. You know, gaining weight or... Gaining vices. <laughs> gaining pills. Gaining exes. Oh my god. Will you hand me a soda from over there, hon? No. What do you want? Um, Either a Coke or a Mountain Dew. I don't care. Okay, I'm going to grab you the first one that I see. Which is this? Chicken. No! Oof, 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 oof. No, I, uh... Yeah, the whole eat your feelings thing, I, I get it. Yeah. And I 100% I understand where it comes from. Yeah. My family went out to celebrate, you know, with food and went to console with food and 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh well. It's for me. It's just fast endorphins. Yeah. Endorphins or dopamine. Oh like my god. Dopamine. Dopamine. Bread. Serotonin. I don't know, but. Serotonin. The happy. Um. Happy, happy. Yeah, talking about uh the ADHD again. In my research on it, I never really researched it till Dexter, but. I read that people with ADHD constantly run a lower than normal dopamine level than everybody else. Um, so that's why the attention deficit is so bad is that they are in a constant search for that dopamine hit just to maintain normal focus on life. And that's why a lot of people with ADHD get addicted to electronics especially like a phone in your hand, that is a constant dopamine source right there. No. I am so done with clickbait. There's so much... And I say this every single time I get on Facebook or Instagram or any of the others. That is a shit ton of clickbait. And then I'm like, these 40 funny memes about quitting your jab. And the little teaser thing as actually something that I want to see in it and it turns out it's just the same screen shots of everything that they, they put on all the clickbait makes me sad because then uh, I keep seeing that clickbait but that's that's uh, Dexter to a T is uh, that constant source of dopamine that's why he could never focus on a single toy you know it was you know constantly trying to get to a state of normal which is the same as addiction you know when whenever uh people become like i i watched this documentary on heroin and you know you you start with the initial high but then eventually you're just doing heroin to feel the normal yeah. um and it was the same with uh adrenaline junkies so um stuntmen like um shit what's his name evil knievel they found that adrenaline junkies had a lower than normal uh adrenaline level in their system so they do these crazy ass stunts just to get a little bit of thrill whereas you know we get it from standing on top of a high building Ooh. you know um it all comes down to that brain chemistry but uh that's why the the medicine for the pain any of her huh do you want me to paint any of her? Yeah, you can paint any of them, or you can... Actually, you know what? A good thing for you to do is paint the inside. There you go. Um, so you can paint under their skirt. Just try not to get any paint on the edge. Whoops. So you see... Yeah. Um, and it's just the screen. So just the inside. Yeah. Okay. Um, You're out. Hoping. But that's why ADHD medication is a stimulant. It stimulates the brain so that you have that level of stimulation. You don't have to constantly search for it. You can actually get shit done. I just have too much stuff to do. And that's why people with ADHD tend to be caffeine addicts. Because it's a stimulant. Yep. Um, and people with ADHD tend to have anxiety. And they found that people who thought that they had an anxiety disorder, when they got treatment for ADHD, the anxiety went away. Uh-huh. Without anxiety medication. Just the ADHD medication. Okay. So I can't get it on the outside or inside edge either, right? Yeah. Just try to do that one surface. Okay. Well, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a little bit on the edge, that's fine. You just got to cover it with white after. Yeah, I figure I'll be doing that. But you don't have to get, like, right on that edge. edge. Okay. Like here, you can use that as an example. See? Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of white. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyway. It's been a learning process. There is a 
hand in hand, basically, with autism and ADHD. Yeah, the idiot. Uh, ADHD? Oh, it, there you go. Yeah. Because um, Finn got diagnosed with when we thought he had Tourette's, and we, I still kind of do, because he ticks when he stresses. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, they, they gave him uh, Tourette's and ADHD. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I don't want to medicate him at preschool, so I'm not I'm not letting anyone know that part. Like, they'll, they're going to figure it out eventually. Yeah. Can uh, sit still for Jack. So, you know, we, we had that moment of questioning whether or not to, to medicate Dexter. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you, so there was a day... And, and it was just a day apart. He has this little handwriting notebook that he has to do handwriting practice in. Yeah. And the one day, um, he did not take his medication in the morning. And uh, it was bad, the handwriting in that day. Mm -hmm. It was all over the place. He could barely write the letter B. It was bad. Yeah. And then day two was medicated. Everything was on the lines. It was neat. It was night and day mm -hmm. between those two pages. And I'm like, well, there's my justification right there. Yeah. You know, I, I'm just putting a tool in his toolbox. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it's bad. I just, like, it, if it's not impacting him school-wise, then I don't want to do it until it actually, you know, impacts him school-wise. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was impacting him that bad school-wise until I saw the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I think my biggest fear is that, um... There's you know, just this huge... The, there's a huge stigma against ADHD medication. Or just ADHD in general. That too, yes. Um, but yes, majority... Like, there is a very vast overlap of symptoms of ADHD and autism. They really do go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and again, the more I researched it in him, the more I saw it in me. Yeah. You know? I stim constantly. So does Finn. <laughs> I really do. And some of the stims are fine. Yeah. And I feel bad because, like, I watched all these adult people with ADHD watching, um... A video of a woman who's stimming and is fine with stimming mm -hmm. and sh they're like you know show me someone who uh grew up stimming and did not grow up traumatized did not grow up masking mm -hmm. and so she's like all right here i am and she's just stimming and she's fine she's happy and you know people were crying over her video because they're like, oh, I wish I could have done that, but I always had to mask what I was doing, you know, mask the, the stimming. And so I'm like, ah, I want my kid to grow up being happy about who he is and how his brain works and, you know, and not feeling bad like he's got to change what he... Kids are know. cruel, man. Yeah. But at the same time, some of the stimming... Well, that's when you gotta kind of do some gentle redirectioning. Yeah. You know, so. Dexter would full body throw himself face first onto cushions and stuff. Oh, God, yeah. Like when he got excited. And so I had to, I had to stop. That's, you know. Yeah, you can't. You're going to hurt me. yourself doing that. Yeah. Like, it's just dangerous to, to him. Yeah. You know. I don't know how you don't get it on the edges. I'm, I'm good. Have to do That's why. Shut up. <laughs> I'm doing it so you don't have to put paint on these. But uh, but yeah. So, I think a lot of it is also, I I don't know. I'm weird when it comes to sound. And repetition and that's all he does is repeat things over and over and mm -hmm. over again it's like um stephanie said something during thanksgiving and she just said she repeated something that i said but she said it in uh an accent and so therefore i repeated it in an accent and i think she repeated it back to me and then the kids started parroting it and they were doing it over and over and over and over. And after like the dozenth mm -hmm. time, I'm like, all right, we're done. It's over now. 
Let's move on. Yep. And I feel like such a bitch when I do uh, stuff like that. That is called overstimulation. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> but I, I can't, I can't deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, I feel like such a bitch because they're having fun. It's not hurting anyone, but I can't, I can't mm-hmm. take it. Yeah. Like, you were overstimulated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But do you again, find yourself in moments of overstimulation often? I I live a chaotic life, mm-hmm. so I assume that every life, every bit is overstimulation. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have meltdowns? And by meltdown, you can also be melt in, where you need to separate yourself and go to a quiet place. Um. To be by yourself. No, I don't get to be by myself. Do you feel the urge to? Well. Probably. Where things are just too much? I, have I you ever that's thought a lot of the bathroom trips, but I don't get to go to the bathroom by myself anymore either. Have you ever thought to be evaluated yourself? Oh, I probably am on <laughs> some level. I I definitely identify with a executive dysfunction or malfunction, dysfunction, whatever. Dysfunction, yeah. Yes. Um, in that I, de- I do spiral. I, I break it simple task into multiple tasks and uh, I have a list and my aunt has had to learn that when I come up from work to leave me alone because I have a list and I gotta get through the Mm -hmm. list in my head don't add to my list because if you add to my list then I have to reorder my list according to what's most important Um, for me it's uh, my biggest thing is when I'm trying to hyper fixate so uh, certain tasks, I have to hyperfixate in order to accomplish a task. And any little noise or any little interruption completely throws me off. And, and I have to calm myself down from blowing up because I know that I will blow up. It's like the other day, this is a while ago, I was revamping our, our webpage at baylight3d.com. And, <laughs> Get that in there. And, uh, baylight3d.com. Uh, so how were you uh, revamping the Baylight3D.com? I was streamlining it, making it more user-friendly and more attractive to look at. And you could check it out at Baylight3D.com. Uh, but anyway, I'm so... I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. That was Baylight3D.com. B-A-A-L-I-T-E 3D.com. Mm, okay. So I was working on the website, and um, the neighbor's grandson... Oh, thank you. He says he likes the overlay. Um, So the neighbor's neighbor's grandson came by, and he likes to play with Dexter. Um, So they were outside playing. The one who just kind of shows up in your your house? Yeah, that's where the story's going. So he likes to to play (laughs) play with Dexter. And uh, I'm sitting there. I'm trying to work on the website. And so Dexter goes outside to play, and Donovan has a little meltdown, a little mini meltdown, because he wants to go out too, but there's no adult out there to watch him. So I'm like, I'm sorry, buddy. I got to get this work done. Maybe we can go out a little later, but you can't go out right now. But after like five minutes, he finds something to do and he calms down. He goes about his business. And then Dexter and the friend come back in the house. And I say, Dexter, I can't like you and your friend cannot come inside to play right now. You you have to go outside. And he's like, oh, and I'm like, yes, go outside. So once again, it restarts Donovan having the meltdown. Where he wants to go outside too, and I have to talk him down and tell him you can't go outside right now. Find something else to play with. We will go outside in a little bit, but I have to focus on this right now. Yeah. And uh, so Donovan finally calms down. He's going about his day. I'm working on the website, and everything's nice and quiet. And not to mention, every time they do this, the dogs pick up too. Of you know, obviously the dogs are going crazy every time. Um, once again, the back door opens mm. and, and I'm trying not to lose my shit because, you know, the, you know, I don't want to yell at the kids and I don't want to yell at this other kid. That's not my kid. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, Dexter, I told you, you have to play outside. And the, the neighbor's kid looks at me and goes, we just wanted to grab some toys to take outside. And I'm like, I'm not fucking talking to you <laughs> in my head. Go <laughs> I'm like, you have to, every time you guys come inside, you rile up the dogs, you get Donovan worked up again, and then I have to calm the dogs down, 
calm Donovan down before I can get back to my work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God. Yeah, the child. The girls get that a lot. I will. I've started. I'm trying to do gentle parenting because I'm trying to limit the trauma that mm-hmm. I send them out in the world with because I feel like they've already got enough and they don't need me with my issues gunking it up even more. Right. So I'm I'm really trying to be mindful of how I raise them so that way. And I'm I'm not perfect. I screw up sometimes. You know, I just I get to the point where I've I've asked nicely, I've asked differently. And I and then I've warned them, I told tell you yeah, I I, I, I tell them I've I've asked you nicely, I'm gonna I'm about to ask you meanly. And sometimes it feels like they don't want to listen or they don't actually listen until I yell Mm -hmm. and that drives me up a wall because I'm trying not to yell Mm -hmm. and they're not listening until they finally get me to that point where I'm just like look I've already told you to stop Mm -hmm. you stop now or you'll go to your room and like well they're also all of them are at that boundary pushing age oh yeah they, they are at that age they where they're trying to learn where your limit is. Yeah. You know, and they see where your limit is and then they go a little bit further. <laughs> Can we push it? Like. And I try. I try really, really hard. And I really think hard. people who don't have kids don't understand that part. Oh, no. Not at all. Like. When I have my children. Yeah, the, the kids know. They oh, know that they are pushing me. Children. They know the reaction I'm going to have. Mm-hmm. It's not a mystery. No. It's happened before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They know it. This isn't surprising them. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and, uh. I just, you know, and that's the thing is, and, and I'm, I am myself working through some childhood trauma, mm. you know, and, and so I think the biggest thing, especially with Dexter, is that when I do overreact or when I do yell and I feel bad afterwards, I talk to him about it. Yeah. And I go up to him and I go, Dexter, you know what? It, it wasn't cool of me to, to get that upset over this. And I'm sorry. Yeah. You know? I acknowledge that, that that was not the way for me to react. Yeah, and I think that's more important than reacting perfectly every time. Yeah. Because then they can see that it's okay to make mistakes as long as you own them and you take responsibility and you apologize. Yeah. So you're... It, it's, it's like, you know, when James and I have an argument, the, the point, the most important point is that they see that we come back together and we can talk it out and so therefore they are learning that for their own relationships they're learning Mm -hmm. what they can expect from their you know their significant others right so you know while i would definitely like to not fight in front of them at least you know they are seeing the important part so yeah sometimes when john and i tear into each other getting into it i don't want to hear it we have a perfect relationship we won't fight over real things well sometimes we do fight and then donovan will be like guys stop fighting (laughs) oh my god finn will get right in between stop fighting stop fighting and like uh, bud sometimes they'll do it when we're just like going having a debate yeah we're not we're not fighting we're just arguing (laughs) because he's wrong (laughs) but uh but yeah no it just gets right in between with the hands out. And I'm like, dude, this baby doesn't have to do that. You gotta <laughs> calm down. You're acting like you're uh, you're growing up in like World War Three here. You need to calm. But, uh, but yeah. Now, it's just, it, like I said, every time I, I have to yell, I feel bad. But, um, but sometimes it's the only way to get things done. And, like, in the morning, the, I I am it. You know, everyone else is sleeping, and sometimes Finn just curls up in the chair, and he does not want to get up. He does not want to do anything. He's under the blankets pretending that he is Robot Phineas, and he is not listening. And I'm like, dude, we have 20 minutes before your bus is here. Yeah. And if you don't get on that bus, you're going to have another meltdown because it left without you. So, 
you know, I, I gotta get him up, I gotta get him dressed. But the girls want to help, and so Rowan is going through her bossy stage, where she tries to be an adult. And I don't want her doing that. I don't want her helping me like that, you know, being re feeling responsible for the kids, because that's not good for her either. She needs to be a kid. Yeah. You know, but she's trying so hard to be in with all the adults. She gets right up next to us when we're talking. And so she tries to add in her two cents. It's cute, but very fucking annoying. <laughs> if you are six, go play. But, like, she'll try and corral Katie, or she'll try and corral Finn, or she'll talk to him in, uh, in, in that voice to try and get him to get up and do things. And, of course, he doesn't listen to her. So the moment that she tries to direct him, he's just like, no, you don't talk to me. <laughs> and um, and then she, you know, she's trying still to get him up and get him moving. And like, I'll be doing Katie's hair. I'll, I'll have completely checked out because it's 630 in the friggin morning. And uh, and then I come to realizing that he is it's just getting even worse because he's reacting to her. And of course, she's six. She doesn't have the ability to see, OK, he's melting down. We need to change tactics. Mm. And so, I mean, one day I, I did his whole morning routine in a robot voice. Phineas, <laughs> can you put on your shirt? Beep, bop, boop, boop, beep, beep. He's like, it's not bebop, beep, boop, boop, boop. I'm like, okay, well, where, what is it? And he's just like, meow, 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 meow. Because that's socks from Lightyear. And that's the thing that he's obsessing on right now. Hmm. And, um, and like I said, I did the entire morning in that voice just to get him up and moving. <laughs> yeah. And it got him up and moving. And I don't care what I have to do if it means that he's on the bus <laughs> and he's good to his teachers. I think it's funny how... Um... Donovan is, uh, at this point, he's showing very neurotypical. Mm -hmm. um, he's not showing a lot of the signs that Dexter would show. He is able to focus on toys. Um, he sits, you know, he'll, he's able to kind of just sit and play with himself. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, like he'll actually just sit and play Legos for a while. Uh, so there's there's a lot of him that's that's showing very neurotypical, but I think he's picking up stimming yeah. Yeah. from the rest of us because we all do it, right? Like we were we were decorating the tree, and God, I cannot remember what the sound was. I wish I could remember. It started as a word that he said back, but he said it back as just a jumbled like, you know, phonetically, you know, wasn't actually the words. Um, and then I just repeated that, and then we just kept repeating it back and forth to each other in silly ways. Can't do it! <laughs> ah! Like, apple core. And then I'd be like, apple core, and then he'd go, apple core, and I'd go, apple core, and then no. he'd go, apple core! I like it. This is me and him, just making sounds back and forth. And Dexter's just like, what are you saying? I was like, it's nothing. We're just making noise. Yeah, I, I was thinking about um, going to uh, a therapist at some point and, you know, do, taking the test, seeing if I need to be on meds. But my biggest... Have you ever taken the Brad's R test? Probably not. I can't... I don't know what that is. Uh, it's the autism spectrum test. It's like nobody who's neurotypical tests above a 64. I tested a 110. Um, but then, of course, my, my brain automatically goes, well, you know, I knew how to answer to get the higher score. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I purposely I did that. I what I did. Yeah. My mo uh, thing was, um, there's Katiosaurus on, uh, TikTok. And so she was going into, you know, what her ADHD is like. And I, a lot of it resonated with me. Mm -hmm. ADHD presents a lot differently in women. Yeah. Than it does in men. That's why a lot of girls go undiagnosed. Oh, of course. Like one, one of the side of, like one of the 
symptoms of ADHD in girls is chattiness, which is often just seen as a girl trait. Yeah, how dare you talk? <laughs> Used to be told that children should be seen and not heard. Yeah, I think children are tiny little human beings that should be treated as human beings. Exactly. Until I need them to do something, and then they're tiny little children that need to listen. <laughs> Oh, I I don't like loud noises. Um, the girls get me. Like the, the, I was coming out of the bathroom one day, and they for some reason decided to um, sit uh, facing the bathroom on the wall facing the bathroom. And Phineas came up to them just as I was coming out of the bathroom, and they both shrieked. And it was so flipping high pitched that it just stunned me for a second. And, um, yeah, I don't like loud noises. Mm hmm Do not like loud noises. Um, I am sensitive to certain types of noises. Yeah. Like, every once in a while, Burley does this thing where she, like, rubs her fingertips together and it makes a, like, she has paint on her fingers mm -hmm. and it makes a noise. And I'm like, Ugh. I don't like eating noises. I'm never going to listen to an ASMR where they're like eating and they're crunching and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Jen's the same way it. with that I too. It. I can stand it. Eat it. I don't, that doesn't bug yeah, me. Yeah, from, from when we worked at, at uh, City, I don't like the nail clipping sound. Mm -hmm. It's like fingers on a chalkboard. Um, I don't like the sound of people walking through snow. I'm not a fan, so I wouldn't want to listen to it all the time. Like over and over again. Yeah. But it's okay. I, I can I can deal with it a little bit. But I've just I found myself like it's little things that I never really thought of before yeah. that made me aware of when I do them now. Like we were at Target. Um and this Target. was last year. Yeah, we were at the Target because they had a, a Christmas decoration that generally wanted. Um why do stormtroopers shop at Walmart? Because they can't find the target. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and uh, we were looking at the Christmas ornaments. And there was one that was really cute. And I did the hand flap. No. Like, I did the little... Ah! <laughs> yeah. I also definitely have cute aggression. Cute aggression? Oh, when it... Uh, yeah, so cute, you, you just want to bite it. it? Yeah. I get that with Donovan all the time. I just want to yeah. bite him. Yeah. And then I do bite Finn. I've had to stop because then he bites me back. It's like, wait a minute! <laughs> this isn't the same! How the turntables. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's not fair! <laughs> You're not supposed to do the thing. I'm doing the thing. It's my turn to do the thing. But one thing that I, I was kind of hoping that would come out of the diagnosis is that uh, he, he would just, people would approach him a little bit differently knowing that he isn't neurotypical. Yeah. Yeah, I hoped for that too. And sometimes it has worked in some cases and in other cases it does not. Though I do like this school system. It's a very good school system. Mm. But I was proactive, you know, with the pre-K, with the with the teachers. I told them, I think he's on the spectrum. He's not a bad kid. He's a sweet kid. But, you know, he doesn't think the same way everyone else does. And I think he doesn't ha have the language. So we had him in, in speech therapy. And unfortunately, his speech therapist left on uh, maternity. So maternity leave. So he does not have one yet. Um, um, you know, Dexter's kindergarten teacher was a bully. So. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad start. I wish you could have just come down to Mercersburg. Because they are great there. They have a whole little special ed classroom. And uh, that special ed teacher is awesome. But she, I didn't Dexter, know. Dexter is so smart. He's so smart. Mm -hmm. He just needs patience. 
foot and direction. Look at who his parents are. <laughs> You're not the most patient of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much products of our parents. No, he, he just needs, like, the teachers to have patience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And to just hold his fucking attention. Like, I'm telling you, the first year that we did Agora, um, the, the first teacher he had, Beth, mm -hmm. I loved her. She was so amazing. She was so high energy, and she kept the kids' attention, and she knew how to keep them engaged, even though it was a cyber school. It was just going from the bully to her. Yeah. I obviously have a much better taste in my mouth for Agora than I do for yeah. Mountain View. And I understand that it's nice to, to let him go have attachments and, and, you know, make friends and stuff in school. Yeah. But, but part of me... He's not set up act academically. Yeah, I yeah. just... I like Agora. I'm gonna yeah. miss it. In, uh, recently when they had, uh, the, the snow and ice, uh, the first snowfall that we had, uh, the next day they had ice on the ground and they still went to school. So, cause that's what we do here. Um, and that's fine. But unfortunately he picked up a big chunk of ice and he threw it at his teacher and it hit her in the face. And she told me after the fact and I felt bad because, like, it hit her in the face. She thought she was bleeding. And so I apologized. And I, I don't, I mean, I'll talk to him about throwing things. He should know better, you know. And she just wanted me to let, to let me know, you know, because it was an incident that happened. And, um, yeah, I can't, I don't know what would have happened had they just thought he was a bad kid. You know? Yeah. So... I mean, meanwhile, definitely. I've got Dexter being threatened by a chainsaw by some little fucker. They yeah. don't do anything about it. Of course not. Because she's a bad teacher and didn't want to teach. That's why when you were telling me that, you know, she was saying he was a bad kid, I'm like, oh my god, what would she do if she actually had a bad kid? And then she got a bad kid. Yep. <laughs> and then she wanted to try and, like, get sympathy from me. Like, you know, this other kid, like, destroyed her classroom. And I'm like, yeah. You see how a real bad kid is? Yeah. <laughs> she stopped demonizing my kid. Yeah, you know what? I still remember you bullying my child. I'm not going to have sympathy for you. You deserve this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but I, I saw all the issues that you were going through and I was worried that we were going to have some Yeah, you were s probably it was probably scary. Oh yeah. Because he's not a bad kid. So now really I have anxiety kid. sending him back. He's a very sweet kid. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body except calling Donovan Poopy Donnie. That's so mean. <laughs> That's his little brother. He's supposed to love him. Oh, he is, he is definitely a big brother. <laughs> but aren't both you and, uh, and John youngest? No, John's the oldest. Why do I always think that he, oh, because he, cause he's the youngest out of all of us. Yeah. Baby. He's just a baby. No, nope, I'm an older woman that stole uh, his mom's oldest kid. Yeah. <laughs> And then I made her a grandma. And she wasn't ready for it yet. <laughs> At least my mother-in-law was ready to be a grandparent, but she was already a grandparent once over and kind of twice over with all of uh, Ryan's siblings. Which is why whenever my mom is just like, oh, well, you know, I don't know if I have the most grandkids out of all the, the kids. And I'm like, well, I mean, you can sort of kind of lump onto the three that come with Ryan, or the two more that come with Ryan. I felt bad. I, one of the first years that we were married, I tried to get them Christmas presents to send down to Florida. 
and they had already gotten pretty much everything that I decided to get for them. Like mm. they, it was just they had better versions of it, and I'm like, oh well, I'm not gonna try anymore. I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> Wap, wap. You had people who saved up all year for this. I just remembered that you exist. So. Sue. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a terrible stepmom. But he, like, he had a good parent growing up. He, parents, you know, his, his mom raised him really, really well. He's a good kid. You know? Yeah, I remember meeting him. So, I mean, they, they instilled some good morals into him. You know, grew up well-rounded. So, I mean, I, I don't have any any complaints. I didn't have to put any effort into there. So, yeah. <laughs> Versus all these other kids that just showed up and now I gotta put out effort for. I should probably get that white and go over <laughs> <laughs> that I did. Quack, quack. I'll leave that for you. Okay. It's, I'll call it the detail work. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> I like the paint where I can just slap it on. Yeah. Slap it on. Slap it. S slap in the base. Anyway. Play a game of slappies. <laughs> Oh, someone's messaging. Why are they messaging? What's this? Hey! Put the shoe for me. Oh, James says the he's going to bed. Okay. Yeah, I already saw he left the stream. I decided to give my break, myself a break tomorrow, and I don't have to be at work until 8. <laughs> Yay! But I yeah, thanks to the melatonin. I woke up at like 8.30 today, so... Mm. Then I took a nap. <laughs> Can I take another nap? I want to take I want to go to bed. <laughs> uh, took a very good nap. See? I painted all the edges. I tried not to. He didn't do too bad. But then, to a certain extent, I was just like, eh, I'm going to do whatever I want. I painted it so that way it's it's mostly... You know what this color reminds me of? My living room? Kiwi. Hmm. Looks like the flesh of a kiwi. Looks like I, the same green in my living room. Now I want a kiwi. Which would be a very bad idea right about now. I could probably mix this paint and take it upstairs and patch the parts of my living room. Nice. Oh my god. I never have I had so much... Damage done to a house until I had all these children. Hmm. Even with your uh, father-in-law's dogs? Well, okay, yeah. No, that was a lot of damage. But, uh, no, the... But it was all, like, fixable damage that I didn't have to replace huge amounts of stuff. Well, I had to replace that one carpet and that one screen in that one bedroom and the other screen in my garden window and all of the trim around that door and all the trim around that door. Okay, so he, they did a lot of fucking damage. <laughs> but, um... But Rowan was somersaulting down the, the hallway. Oh, <sighs> Kids. Um, and, and crashed into the bathroom door, and now there's a butt-shaped dent in the door. <laughs> and I keep forgetting about it, but then I see the picture that they sent me, and I, I get annoyed all over again. <laughs> because... Yeah. Because she hasn't been somersaulting down the freaking hallway. Why are you doing that crap in the in the house? Damn it! There's a butt dead. Don't do that! <laughs> Damn it! So, yeah. <sighs> anyway. Any toot. Yeah, so I have a butt dent in my bathroom. We have door. a fair amount of um, views on these videos after the fact, by the way. That's great. Like, some of them have like 30 views. Mm. I wonder, like, how long do they have to watch the video before it counts as a view? Or if they just load it and it's a view? Yeah, I don't know. Because I doubt that they're watching the f entire four hour stream. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. We're not that funny. 
I mean, we're funny, but we're not that funny. Yeah. We were oh. pretty informative today. Well, yeah, because we're talking about ADHD and mental illness. <laughs> I know a lot about that! <laughs> like you said, it's it's one of the the drawbacks or flaws? I don't know. It's something that I need definitely need to work on to be more empathetic. Mm. And... But, like, so much of my day-to-day is just getting through it. Mm-hmm. So if I'm just getting through it and I'm coping to get through, it, I just don't understand. And, and like I said, part of me does understand. But, and and can be like, okay, but we'll, we'll help you out today. Well, I would also say, like, you you came from a standpoint, especially growing up, where you had to be the person of action. You know, your your siblings ate because of you. Yeah. You know, so so you had to be that strong person that was always, you know, kind of picking up after other people. And I'm sure that has some effect now where you're just like, I'm sick of being this person. I want someone else to fucking step up. Yeah. Yeah. He's already gone to bed, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. And it's really hard not to talk about the most recent chain of events, Ugh, but yeah. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. When are you coming next? Um, I work this Sunday. I work uh, tomorrow eight, 8 to 10. And then Cyber Monday they have me working um I I took overtime. I think I start at seven, or I might start at eight. But then I work until eleven. I think I start at eight, and then I work until eleven. Mm-hmm. Because I can almost trick my brain into thinking that last hour and a half is not so bad. Like it just goes by so fast. Yeah. Um. But I have to space my breaks out so that way I can get through the day. Yeah. Because if one, even one of them is too early or too late... Something just, oh. something that always worked for me that other people didn't like, like, they're like, that just makes it sound worse for me, was, think, was like, picturing my, my days in blocks of 15-minute increments. Oh, I did movies. Uh, when I was trying to uh, talk Heather through the day, um, when we are in crew, um... I would tell her, look, you, you have one more movie's, you know, length of time to go. You could sit through a movie. You could sit through this. You know. Like, my thought was, you know, a 15-minute break goes by in the blink of a fucking eye. Yeah. You know? It's just four 15-minute breaks. Ah, uh, yeah, no, we work. That's how it helped me. But then other people were like, you know, that makes it sound worse to me. And I'm like, eh, whatever works or doesn't. I found out that I could have done an overnight shift and gotten all my overtime hours. I just gotten them out of the way. Yeah. But, nope. But I had to work through most of that time anyway. I work Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday. So, I work on all the big shopping days. Is this Kelly? I can't help it, I'm sorry. Again, I've been up since 545. You really did get green everywhere, didn't you? I told you, I tried. (laughs) (laughs) I tried. (laughs) One of the D20 dice sellers that I usually buy from. They have a um, five dollar week. Well, every every week they have a different die that's on sale uh, for five five dollars. Mm-hmm. And uh, nice. I, I definitely have a uh, amassed quite a hoard. Um, <laughs> Clackies. But at this point, like I have all the ones that I want, and they haven't really come out with anything new. But they're like support a small business. Like, yes, I will support your small business. And then I went, 
and nothing new that I want. Because they're not focusing on the resin dice anymore. They're really focusing... I mean, they still have them. You still order them. They, they still mass produce them. But, like, they're focusing on uh, metal or wood or gem die, dice. Mm. And I don't want those. I am not really keen on metal dice. They have a different feel. And um, I don't like that feel. Hmm. So I don't want them. I have some wooden dice that are neat, but I won't ever use them in gameplay mm. because they're just neat. They're not like, they don't feel like real dice. Um, and I have a, a metal set that I feel like is going to destroy anything that I roll them on because mm. they're heavy. Mm -hmm. But it's still cool to have them. Mm -hmm. I don't want more. You know? So, yeah. And they, they're not, they don't fit in with the rest of my dice. <laughs> I, I have separated them into, these are the dice I will use. These are the dice that are too pretty to use. <laughs> these are the dice that are just the hoard dice. When I need to loan something out, here's a set. You know, when I just need to roll a bunch of d sixes, here's a set. You know, here, you know, here's the the the, the crowds, the plethora. Yeah. You know, and no rhyme or reason, just I have them. You know, um, the place where I buy my paints uh, is a little card shop, hobby shop, and uh, they have their rack of impulse buys right there at the front oh. and of course they have dice so, and every single time i go in to buy my paint i'm like i'm here to just use the business card nothing personal i'm here to use the business card nothing personal <laughs> no do i need the giant stuff d20 i would like it but i don't need it yeah i found oh um, the giant stuff d20 is also a dice bag i don't <gasps> need it what? <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> <laughs> because you can always pay the card back. I'll have to show it to you. You'll have to come with me. I found one on Amazon. Not sponsored. Not affiliated. Don't give Bezos any more of your money if you can help it. But, I mean, honestly, who else do you order from but Walmart? Um, I do have to go pick up paint. This week. Okay. So the next time you work, we can all go. Okay, they're called the Whiz Dice Titan Dice. Titan? They're not badly priced either. Are they like big dice? They're humongous dice! <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, can, uh, can I turn as, this as, the, as the name Titan. Can I get it out? I can get it out. I can help you there! Like chunkers! Ooh! I know, and that's called Sparkle I can make those. Vomit. Yeah. I can make those. Ooh. I have uh, giant dice molds. That's what they look like. That's one of them. I'll have to show you my dice molds at some point. I like Calliope, but I'm not paying $18 for seven fucking dice. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But see, they're so pretty. Aww. Yeah. $40 for the complete collection. I might, I might do that. There's several collections. Uh, no, three wooden dice. Nope. Kidding. I don't know. I, I like the... Um, oh, what is it? The Poundo dice? Yeah. Because one, I like cheap dice. But then the second, I like fun dice. So they're like, <laughs> these are the... Uh, the there's there's something wrong with them there's the pip it didn't quite come out something something's going on um okay sorry my husband his message popped up anyway they don't have to be perfect i don't care if a dice consistently rolls a little wonky <laughs> it just adds to the game James needs to buy them by the pound because he has to get rid of the uh... <laughs> <laughs> all his awful crit fails. <laughs> he needs to get rid of the cursed dice. 
I understand. So in our game that we were playing, they Kelly had to basically give him a sword with a little loopy mm -hmm. on the end of it because he <laughs> lost so many weapons. In my in my homebrew, gnomes uh, are all part of the company. You have some rogue gnomes, but generally you won't find them. Uh, but they're all part of the company, and the company is essentially just a... Um, it, it kind of falls under Tinker Gnomes, because I've always liked Tinker Gnomes. But, uh, out of Dragonlance. But, um... But essentially, the gnomes are all mechanically inclined. They they like inventions and making inventions. So they all uh, they were almost all almost wiped out uh, in the early days. So there's only pockets of them left. And again, they're all part of the company, and the company is not responsible for any losses. But if you need to get across a wide lake, and you need to do it underwater. For whatever reason, um, then there's a submarine run by the company. You need to traverse mountainous regions and go from mountain top to mountain top or mountain village to mountain village. They have a um, uh, jeez Louise, I can't think of it. Airship. It was an airship, but it was along lines. It was like um, oh god, what are those little trolley things? The air trolleys that trek you up the mountain that's what i imagined in my head it wasn't actually an airship it was like a little trolley I trolley car yeah i i don't remember what you called it but um in any event the the gnome sits at the the wheel and the wheel is um is all enchanted so whoever is actually touching the wheel is safe because it's um i can't think of the the spell that it's actually i i I do a lot of homebrew where it's not exactly... Uh, I, I learned to make the game how you want it to go, not necessarily how the book says it should go. So, yeah. So there's an enchantment around the wheel that um, basically acts as a ward to protect whomever is driving the particular vehicle. But there's always a sign that says the company is not responsible for any losses. And that includes loss of items, loss of life, <laughs> loss of whatever. Um, and poor James kept fumbling and tossing all of his weapons off the side of the airship. Little air trolley. What are they called? Do, 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 do. Monorail. 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 Uh, trolley up mountain. What's it called? Is it just called a railway? Oh, it's a tram. A hillside tram. Or a funicular. Funicular? Yeah, it means rope. Which translates to rope. Rope mm. cables in the funicular loop system powered by either humans or animals. Cool. I mean, that's pretty much what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I accurately described no. this to you. But yeah. See? Look at that. That... Yeah, because at one point, like, something was attacking the lines or something. Yeah, harpies. Yeah. And they kept calling them eagles. Yeah. No, 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 they're just eagles. They leave us alone. We leave them alone, they leave us alone. I keep watching all these, um, these D&D podcast type things because of Sam. <sighs> and, um, it makes me want to learn different voices because they're all done by voice actors. Which means that they all have the voices, and I don't do the voices. I don't, I don't think it's coming out. This happens with the white. She's just really excited and thumping the leg. <laughs> That's my tail. Uh, I would have said something, but I don't want to trigger you. <laughs> Now I'm a little worried about what it was. I said I'm a wolf. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Again, I wouldn't be so weirded out by by any of it if it just didn't have the sexual element to it. But because it has the sexual element to it, I'm just like, oh, this is so cringe. <sighs> and I want the cringe to stop. <laughs> 
Not ready for the cringe. Damn it. What the hell? Where did that come from? Get green all over this bitch. I told you it's hard. But yeah. Music stop, music stop. Gotta stop the, the music, music did again. stop. When did the music stop? Just now. Oh, it's not got so quiet. Hold on. I just assumed you stopped talking. I will take care of it. Oh, do we have another viewer? Make it work. I'm making it work. Is no, there another? We're still at one. No, we have two. We viewers. have someone named Lurks now. Oh. I think they're lurking. Are you a lurker? Lurks. That's cool. You don't have to talk to us. You can stick around and listen to us and listen to the lovely music that I'm going to hopefully play here. Just a second. Okay, now I already looked at her. Let's do, do, look do, at do, the next person. Give us, a, give us a follow. Do it. Oh, they all play the same game, though. Hmm. 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 No, I'm, I'm looking at... Nerds. What do you think of that? It's nice. Do you like it? Um, yeah, okay. You like that? No, no. Do you like it? I can, I can deal with it. It's if fine. you don't like it, I'll go fine. find something else. It's no! Fine. Find something else! Okay, so this one, the the name, we're, we're calling off all of our lurker people. Who are offline. Maybe. Yeah, I like that one. That one okay. works. Do, 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 do. If you can't hear the music, let us know. I think our viewer left. Aww. They got scared. Hey, one of our people uh, who is apparently, uh, Watching us is also live. P O O P O E Path of Exile statistics. So they're doing something. Who? I I Commander Root. Oh. Streaming Path of Exile with five viewers. But it shows that they're watching. So I don't know how that works. What you doing? Sneaking and snooping. Sneaky, sneaky. What are you doing? Oh, I was just gonna go look at his shit. So apparently, I mean, I can stream and look at his shit. Who? So. Commander Root. Oh, okay. I was just on his stream real quick. It just is a really blurry guard of war. Dude. There you go. <laughs> Paint. Dance, dance. Oh, what? Oh, I was looking at one of the lurky lurks. Girl on a farm playing games. Mm. Nine point one followers. I don't know why. I think I just saw it, and so yay. Mm. Boop. Give okay, so Lurks follow. is 24 7 Twitch statistics. Oh. So I don't know, but there are 10 people viewing that. I'm going to be in 11th. I'm watching what they're watching. Oh, there's an ad. An ad? I don't want to watch an ad. Don't give us no ads. No ads. It's just a... Just wait. Just wait. One day I will be able to give the ads. No, don't give any ads. How else will I make the mad muns, huns? I don't know if you make money off of ads, do you? You make the muns, huns. Well, we you make, make them, you make them watch the ads and then you get the money. <laughs> but you'll get the women. <laughs> it's backwards. Okay, what's this? Are we on this list? It is a tiny list. Are we on it? 
No, but I don't know. But there's an ASMR, a music, a Dead by Daylight. So I guess this is what they're doing. I can do asthma. Asthma. And anybody? Hello. Anybody want to hear me munch a chip into the microphone? No, no one wants to hear that. That's Crunch. awful. That's awful. Don't like it. Crunch. Um, the only viewer on our channel right now is you. It's probably me. Just me. All the others are just lurkers. Do, 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 do. Lurker, lurk, lurk, lurk. Okay, come back. Do, 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 do. Itchy. No itchy, itchy. Meta views. Can't tell me how much you know it. Edutainment for the masses, and you in particular. Did you say edutainment? Edutainment, that's what it says. Yeah, so. Oh! Edutainment! No. Edutainment. But yeah. It's oh! Axtutainment. Oh no. Extract text? Oh no, what is that? What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> He's asking me for permissions, though. Whoa! Oh, well, Russians. <laughs> is it Kenny can't ask any for permissions? <laughs> Am I the asshole for not buying brillery or cake pop every time I buy something at Starbucks? <gasps> What's that? I don't know. Read it. Oh, uh, okay. Why not? So I'm 14. Already you're not the asshole. But you might be. I don't know. There's a Starbucks in my small town that I pass by every time my family goes somewhere. Occasionally, I'll ask my mom if I can get a drink on the way to school or whatever. She asks if I'm paying, and I say yes. However, my brother, he's five, thinks that he is entitled to get something, too. My mom asks me if I'm going to get something for him, but it's more of the you-are-buying-it tone, and not an actual question. He only likes cake pops, but they're four bucks, and I don't want to pay for his all the time. I pay with my card with my own money. What money do you have at 14? Unless you're mowing your lawns. I don't know. It's so annoying to have to spend it and no one ever pays me back. They don't, they don't say they will, but my mom argues it builds the relationship between us. My brother never gives me anything. He's four or he's five. He doesn't have any money, so he doesn't buy anything for himself or anyone. The other day I had enough loyalty points to buy a free drink, so we went in the drive thru line and he demanded to know why my mom didn't say his order. She then asked if I had enough for him too. I said I don't, and my brother started throwing a fit. My mom was giving me dirty looks all afternoon. Reddit, am I the asshole? And of course, all these people are seriously answering this 14 year old. <laughs> Not the asshole. Forcing you to pay for your little brother using your own money will only build resentment. <laughs> he's he's fourteen. <laughs> he's five. The <Good> brother. <laughs> I mean, granted, mom shouldn't be making him use his own money for the brother. That's kind of yeah. No, like, don't do that. But maybe like she doesn't want to deprive him of him getting what he wants. But at the same time, you know, maybe. When your brother's in the car, forego that. Because you know he's going to want something. And maybe your mom can't afford your Starbucks habit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think you're 14. You're probably not looking at all the, the angles here. But uh, maybe you don't need a Starbucks drink every time you pass the Starbucks. Maybe you should save your money. Yeah, maybe somebody at 14 probably shouldn't be drinking that much Starbucks. Exactly. Granted, they have a lot of drinks that aren't even coffee anymore. The mocha frappuccino in particular. Mainly because I like the mocha frappuccino. I could drink that all the time. What I always loved were the kids in school who always drink the Starbucks drinks and they're like, I don't have coffee. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you do not like coffee. Because if you had real coffee, you would not, uh, would not enjoy it. Mainly because I don't enjoy coffee. I just need it. I don't like coffee either. I need the taste of it. That's why I have the skinny syrups that mm -hmm. are the sugar-free syrups. 
because they're delicious, but only the salted caramel one. I don't know why, but the mocha does not taste chocolatey enough. Um, probably it has that artificial chocolate flavor. Yeah. I'm Screw not that. a fan. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. And then they have like I the... like the um the sugar free international delight creamers. Uh, I, I have a yet. pumpkin spice one. He just makes a cold brew with his uh black rifle coffee. Which I don't taste any difference. Like it's all the same to me. Coffee's coffee. Brew it and then put ice in it and then put half and half or uh what is it? Heavy whipping cream. And uh and then put a the sugar free syrup in it. I'm I got salted caramel. So good. Oh my god, so good. So I got a gigantic bottle of it. <laughs> Because I think I'm the only one who drinks it. But I don't know. Because it went pretty dang fast. Someone's drinking a lot of coffee. I gotta say. I love you Sam. But I love you more at your mom's house. And not my house. Yeah. We're just not good at hosting for very long. Yeah. Like. You can be here, but then you have to leave. <laughs> and I'm sorry, that will probably hurt his feelings. I love you, Sam. Platonically. I never want to see you naked. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Again, James is all like, you don't call me Jamothy. You can't call him Samothy. I am literally just trying to wake him up to see whether or not he, he's going to come with me or if he's going to stay asleep. That's it. I, I'm just calling him by various random names, whatever will wake him up. That's it. That's all I want. Uh, that's my term of endearment. <laughs> Oh, no, y'all, I'm getting pretty fucking tired. <laughs> it is two o'clock. I'm sorry. Oof. Oof. I'm not being very helpful. I'm sorry. I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hand me the other one? I'll paint that no. one too. The, all the bottoms are done. Okay. And it looks like it's taken a lot of uh, precision work there for her hair. Or helmet. Yeah. Or horns, whatever it is. I don't know anything about Pokemon other than Jigglypuff, and that's only because I like Jigglypuff. We need to get some Jigglypuff. I would prep the crap out of a Jigglypuff. Done. Beautiful. No. <laughs> that's an intrusive no no thought. <laughs> could be. I could. You just gotta try. What's our term turkey demographic again? Is it like 24 to 34? What, ours? 34? Like 25 to 40 something? 20. That's a big range. Mm. But I thought it was a little bit younger too. No. Yeah, I guess younger people don't have that much money. I no can't see money. an 18 year old dropping $170 on a figure. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Work goes into them. <laughs> <laughs> but if 125 to 170 dollars ain't your bag, then uh, get a DIY. Yep, those are significantly cheaper. Do all the work yourself. Significantly cheaper. I'm tired. No, you're not. Keep painting. <gasps> okay, that's a good first start. Do another one. Do it again. Do it again. And do it like 500 more times. No, that's not 500. She's done. <laughs> Box her up! 
<laughs> All right. But when it returns. No returns. This is why if we got more videos, I think that people could see it and then they wouldn't have to worry about because John was talking about reviews and how, you know, mm. we can pretty much say whatever good review, whatever, whatever, but until like they see the reviews. Mm hmm. I don't know. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know either. I just paint. No words. I just want to do the horror figures. I think those would be cool. No, we already do a lot of horror figures. No, we don't. Unless we're talking about the H the WH. Boobs. Vagine. Not on this one. No like vaginals. Uh, no vaginals uh, on yeah. this one. Bajangle, bajangle. <laughs> no bang jangles on this one. Don't worry. I know. It looks like I'm just slopping paint on. I am. But, uh, I, I go through and I, I, I make the corrections. I'll go back through with the white again. And make Yay. sure all the white is white and all Wait. the green is green. I, when I asked you, how do you do it so you don't have to fix it? You're just like, I do it so I don't have to fix it. So mm -hmm. you're saying that you do fix it? Yeah. <gasps> you lied. Mm-hmm. Liar. Mm-hmm. Big old liar, liar. Mm-hmm. Oh, neat. You wrote the music do, credit. Do, 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 it's still do, that music do, do. credit? I know, it's not. It's the different one now. <gasps> Dare you, you lie there too! <laughs> <laughs> what else have you lied about? Do the peasants know? My hair? <gasps> Not red. What? Yeah. What color is your hair? I'm mostly gray now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't started dyeing mine yet, but Dude, it's funny. I, I, went, I started going gray when I was in my 20s, man. I, went, I started going gray early. I will never forget getting ready for my ding dang wedding. And I think you and um, Leah maybe were helping me get ready. And I was getting my hair done. And and you were talking about gray hairs. And I'm like, oh, I I'm, guess I'm lucky I'm... You know, this age and I don't have any gray hairs yet. Um, you know, I have blonde highlights, but no gray hairs. And within half a second, both you bitches pulled out a gray hair. And you're like, well, what's this? <laughs> it's my goddamn wedding day! <laughs> you couldn't let me be delusional for just a little bit! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, definitely not. It Jackasses. definitely had to have been Leah. <laughs> No, oh, it's probably Leah. You guys are just so mean. But I've known her forever. I've pretty much known you forever too at this point. Over ten years. Yep. So I when Sam was just like, she's my best friend. I'm like, we don't make best friends like that. No. Best friends take a lot of hard work. And and insults. Yeah. If you're not making fun of them constantly, they're not your best friend. At best, an acquaintance. And then you reach Burley and I. We're, we're just siblings. Yeah. Well, James and I went over that uh, a while ago. We're like, so-and-so is my best friend, but I'm not their best friend. And then that, they're the, that's their best friend. But they're not their best friend. So... <laughs> Hey, this just goes down the, the list of, you know, people who you would help move a body versus people who would help you move a body. I'd help you move a body. You totally would help me move a body. 
And I would help you move a body. If I weren't already moving a body. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever we t try to schedule anything, it just always ends up that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you help me move a body? I don't know. I can't have my hands full. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put them on ice for like a day? <laughs> just keep them underneath the couch or something. I don't know. I remember so, coming down here when uh, he first set up the basement and he wanted to show me all the little figurines. And, you know, yeah. These are my toys. <laughs> Come look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Can't touch them. Just look. But you can look at him. Um, I swear, like, one of the worst plot twists, or one of the worst plot stories, uh, Desperate Housewives. So, throughout the entire series, and this was in the last season of Desperate Housewives, so if you haven't watched it, spoilers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Gabby has like been talking about throughout the entire series about how her stepdad molested her and uh you know, the twist big... that he didn't no he did the the twist was that everybody thought he was dead and he was actually alive <gasps> and he came back and um he had followed her and uh she had confronted him and then at some point he came back um and then like tried like to attack her and Carlos, to, to save her, hit him over the head and ended up killing him. And uh, at the time, Bree was dating a cop. And everybody was coming to their house to, uh, it was like a block party type of thing. And so everybody was like basically en route to their house. Uh -huh. And uh, they pulled the girls in and they ended up hiding the body. And I'm like... It was obviously self-defense. Like, you just explain what fucking happened. You just tell the cop what happened and let them go about their, their you know, he was... But it would ruin the day. But, like, then they had to, the like, day. they had this whole storyline about how the, you know, Susan was all upset because, you know, she, she was feeling guilty about hiding the body and all this shit and... Then all this drama, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like... Manufactured drama. It's so dumb. Mm -hmm. It's so dumb. Like, there was a lot of dumb shit that happened in that show that I could forgive. Mm -hmm. But it got to that point, and I'm just like, all right, I'm done. I always confuse that show with real Housewives. Yeah. Housewives. No, this, this is a sitcom. This is not reality TV. And the only thing that I remember, and I don't even remember anything, it's just I remember the memes. <laughs> the cat meme. That's about it. Oh, yeah. I never watched that. I need to watch Orange is the New Black, too. There's a scene in it that kept going around about a transgender character. Yeah, I watched uh, the, the first season. Mm. And part of the second season. Um... I actually, I watched it when I had just given birth to Dexter. I was still on maternity leave and John was working the night shift. Mm. And so I would be up with Dexter, like giving him feedings and watching Orange is the New Black. Um, and yeah, it's uh, Laverne Cox is the, the woman who's the transgender woman. But there's someone who's giving her like a pep talk. And she's like, you don't owe anyone else your happiness. Yeah. Yeah, you are who you are. You need to be who you are. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. A little monologue. Have you ever watched Handmaid's Tale? Not yet. Oh. I'm waiting for it to be less relevant to our current political situation. Hmm. Um, one of the actresses in uh, Orange is the New Black is also in Handmaid's Tale. Uh -huh. I just, I really like her. She's really good. Getting tired of people dressing up to go to protest. Yes. Sending out uh, pepper spray balls and uh, you know gas into crowds of 
women who potentially could be pregnant when it's an abortive. Very sick shit. It's like during the Black Lives Matter protests where they were targeting journalists with the um, rubber bullets and yeah. shattering eye sockets. And they're like, look how, uh, look how violent they are. There's you fucking a... shot them in the face. I am. Um, I saw like the the one march was going on during the the whole abortion stuff and. And then somebody was like, okay, here's the rules for, for marching. It's like, cover up all your tattoos and make sure you do this and make sure you do that and make sure you do this. And I'm like, yeah, I just realized I'm way too fucking old for this. <laughs> but the reason why they do it is so that way you can be identified later on. Oh, I know. I know. But I'm just, I'm, I'm reading through all this and I'm like, I've got ki- kids at home. Like, it's not, it, the, the marches are not what they used to be. No, they don't accomplish as much. No, they don't accomplish anything. It's just basically showing. Yeah. But we wouldn't have to do with so many fucking marches if people just got out and voted. Still abysmal numbers. Uh-huh. Seems like all these people that would be so fucking vocal, just fucking vote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get the, Get the old people out of office. Mm-hmm. No. But no, you have like fucking, what was it, Abbott? Yeah. Voter right back in. Yep. I still think it's funny that Fox News cut away from Trump's speech. <laughs> still think that's funny. And see, everybody was saying, I, I heard a lot of experts saying that they didn't think he was going to run again because his ego couldn't take another failure. Mm. No, he's just going to continue to push until he either gets what he wants or his people get, it, what, get him what he wants. Yeah. You're eating my chips. I'm mm. my chip. I got them for us. You bought them for me. I bought them for us. Trying to stay awake. Well, I would like to be eating a chippy, but instead I am a pink monkey. Ow. Ow. (laughs) (laughs) So I sent a happy birthday, or no, I'm sorry, happy Thanksgiving text message with uh, pictures of Finn. To my mother-in-law. She responded with you too. Like the letter U and the number two. (laughs) (laughs) That's cool. Thanks. My in-laws have COVID. That's sad. They got it in Thailand. They just got home. Yeah, because they were like going everywhere. Yeah. Like they went and enjoyed Asia. I'm sure it was worth it, though. I mean, they got to go around to a bunch of different temples and all kinds of stuff around Asia. Oh, it looked like there? it was a beautiful trip. Uh, I think her and Jacob are currently in the country because it was Jacob's time to get his citizenship. Cool. It's one of those things. It's like when they call you, you got to show up. Mm-hmm. Trying. Just getting tired. Why is so much shinier when you paint them? Hmm? Why so much shinier when you paint them? Hmm. Use the same paint and it came out flat for me. It drives flat. Now, once they're all painted and nice, how long do you wait until you spray them? 
till they're dry. Hmm? Till they're dry. So is that like an hour? Two hmm. hours? Depends on the paint. Army painter paints dry pretty fast. Hmm. Um, you like to, th you know, it's it's nice to uh, thin down your paints. Uh -huh. um, you can thin down your paints with plain water, but that makes them dry slower. So I use airbrush medium. Nice. Now is that a tip and trick that you learned somewhere, or did you discover that upon your own? Um, I don't know. I'm sure I didn't come up with it by myself. It's probably one of those things that I just kind of picked up as I was looking around at stuff. I like to buy the airbrush version of the army painter because it's already thinned. But not all colors come that. And uh, the more you can paint straight out of the bottle, the better because that means you don't have to mix more color if you run out of something. Or you can do like me and you mix a giant batch of it. Nice. That's what I do with my flesh tone base too. <laughs> Let's buy from the website. Yeah. Uh -huh. and give Still no viewers. Five. Hey viewers, come and join us. We are fun. Kinda. We think we're funny. I think we're funny. You may not. That's cool. Subscribe. I mean, follow or whatever. Give us one. Yeah, I see you. You you dropped us a follow this earlier today. Me? Yeah. What? I got. Oh, eight hours yeah. ago, you followed me, and I'm like, because you know we're sitting here trying to get followers, and you are not I following the channel. Following. I was already following, mm -hmm. and then it had a little heart beside it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't lit up, mm -hmm. and so I hit the the little heart and it said oh plus follow wait a minute <laughs> did that just unfollow oh heart <laughs> I thought it was like liking it I don't know I'm not hip with the hippity jibbity either I kept doing baylight.com. Like, that's not it. That's not my website. What is your website? Baylight3day.com. It's on the thing. It's on the thing. Did you pin, you didn't pin the link tray this time. No. Tisk. No. You think you can keep this active for a minute? I mean, I can wave my hands around. Just Mwah. talk. Tell Mwah. a story. Tell a story. Yeah, once upon a time. There, I started it for you. I don't know. That's not enough of a lead-in. Once upon a time, there was a goat. Where are you going? I'm going to the bathroom. <gasps> She's going to the bathroom. There was a goat, and it was a goat, and it won another goat friend, so it got a goat friend, and it was amazing. And, um, she's gonna be in the bathroom for a long, really long time, so lots of goat facts. Um, actually, what are the goat facts? Goat, no, goat, ghost facts. We can talk about ghost. Goats were one of the first animals to be tamed by humans and were being herded 9,000 years ago. It is also the most consumed meat per capita worldwide. No! I love goats. Okay, so so um, the fainting goat, I, I, I really do love goats. Um, but there was a, uh, a, a goat that was bred because it, all of its muscles like seized whenever it got scared. Because it just, that's what it did. And that was the sacrificial goat because... 
that goat would flop over and the wolves would get at that goat while the shepherd was able to get the rest of the goats away to safety. So yeah, that's the fainting goats. But I love them. They are adorable. And if you haven't seen them, you can go to Google and you can look at them. And they're so fluffy. And when they're babies, they're so adorable. And I really want a goat. And no one will let me have a goat. Probably because I'm really excited about goats. And it would be my most favorite thing ever in the whole wide world. Including probably the children. I would have to abandon the children to cuddle with the goat. Because they're so cute! It's like, it really is like a toddler on crack because they're so cute and yeah and they climb everything everything so even if you got an enclosure you'd have to put a a, a a ceiling on the enclosure because they would get out they climb i mean hence the mountain goats um which is really insane like the the, the mountain the goats climb up the mountain and they're, they are pretty much standing on sheer surfaces. And did you know that goats can climb trees? I did not realize that I would get this far with goat facts, but I love them. So, ooh, good topic. <laughs> what makes a goat a goat? I don't know. What is a goat? A goat? Yeah, no. Why would they say what makes a goat a goat? It's a goat. It's awesome. But um, I think that's that's the extent of my goat knowledge. Sorry, I mean, it's, there's not a lot of goats. I was typing something before she left, and now I'm just talking to myself, I'm talking to our non-existent viewers, people who may get this far in the video by watching it after it's already been shot. All right, um, again, we're doing guard of horse. My little, little feetsies. Let's see. I'm gonna do this and then they're gonna all fall and they're gonna have to be reprinted. Feetsies! Feetsies! And more feetsies. Look at them! It's like synchronized swimmers. Anyway, um, they are from Polybit's art. I'm gonna touch it and it's probably not even dry. Look at that! There you go. Anyway, uh, but yeah, they're from Polybet's Art, and they come in as a safer work and not safer work option. The not safer work is a different pose and includes a Pokeball. This one right here. Boop. And it's cool. Do do do. Oh no! Now I'm just playing with all the figures. I said most of the stuff that I know about goats. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remembered fainting goats, and then I remembered, oh, wait, I love goats. <laughs> I do I know, know so much about goats. I knew a little bit about goats, mainly that James won't let me have any. <laughs> <laughs> and that when I was very high on morphine while my gallbladder was dying, that uh, I hyperfixated on goats and wanted one. I remember you talking about cuddle goats. Cuddle goat. That was because I was talking to um. Oh my God! What is his name? Stupid man. Wes. Wes. Yeah. That was sad how that relationship ended. Yep. But she's happy. You know, she met another dude and. They got, I think, married. If not married, they at least had a baby. Oh, wow. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about it. James more talks to her than I do. Really? Well, yeah. She had big boobs. Mm. So obviously he's going to keep that relationship going. I didn't think they were that going. big. Huh? I didn't think they were that big, but... Meh. But he enjoyed her company more than he enjoyed Wes's because Wes was a big old progressive. Mm. Apparently I've been radicalized. Mm. <laughs> I just thought she was abusive. I... I'm kind of a bitch. Don't so. know. I think that he was emotionally abusive. 
Yeah. She was physically abusive, but she, he, he was emotionally abusive. He gaslit her a lot. Was not a good relationship, regardless. Yeah. She was also a bitch. <laughs> I don't remember her doing anything that was terribly objective, objectionable, other than um, when she decided that she wasn't going to be in the wedding. And she really? kind of manipulated that whole situation. Yeah. That was kind of I thought she was kind of a bitch every time that we wanted to play something other than what she wanted to play. She threw a little hissy fit. Yeah, but so did he. Yeah. Again, yeah. They're, neither one of them. I mean, he was, was a dick, really but that good. doesn't mean she wasn't a bitch. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying she wasn't. <laughs> I'm just also say, pointing out that he, he kind of was too. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. There, there was no, there was no love cap to there. Talking about how he, he just uh, had gotten a new system. Oh my god! When we were playing the the space punk thing, and we're like, we're gonna go and get the books if we are gonna continue to play this game. We like this game. We want to play this game, and so we played it for like two more sessions, and then he's just like, I got this new game. Let's play this new game. Like, but we want to play the other one. We want to see where that one goes. It's like, N no, we're gonna play this one now. And then it was the Cthulhu one. Yeah. <laughs> My character died within the first couple of minutes, and I'm like, well, that's it. Because <laughs> it took forever to, to finish character creation. And then she's yeah. like, oh, yeah, no, a horse sucked all your life force out. You're dead. Okay. okay. Moving on. <laughs> Fun game. <laughs> um, yeah. I at least liked it when we were playing the Firefly knockoff space punk thing. Yeah. Well, we did, we did the Firefly, but... Hell, I liked the, the superhero thing where I had a shrink ray. Oh, yeah! I was vastly overpowered, though. I think I could control air or something. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe it was time. I had to nerf the character because it's just, it comes out as vastly overpowered. Yeah. I essentially one shot the big bad. Yeah. Yeah. Womp womp. And I think that was the whole thing. Oh, I, I started telling you a story about my aunt as a DM. Yes! And how, um, and this, this night's coming all the way around. <laughs> um, uh, so... I, I learned to sort of DM from her. She was DMing our games. You have to put an edit in the video. It's like, stick around to the end to find <laughs> out what happens. <laughs> TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went away to college and I played D&D &D with other people. And then I came back while I was in college um, to play kind of like a, a, a family game. You know, because they were still playing like every Saturday night. And I would show up sometimes if I didn't have another game going on. But um I uh, I helped her code DM uh, uh like a holiday one shot. What's that? That's my cat. Oh okay. Um and I realized that she would roll to hit and then see whose armor class she hit. No, 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 no. You have to say, I am trying to hit you. Do I hit you? No. Move on. You know, but she, she would, like, literally roll the die, and she'd get, like, a 16, and she'd look at the list of armor classes, and she's like, well, I hit blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, how, how, how far of a reach does this person have? <laughs> Because that's several people all spread out over the battle map. You can't hit all of them. And that's not how that works. So the entire time I was learning how to play D&D, I was learning it very much incorrectly. Or she was doing the DMing very, very much incorrectly. Which makes so much more sense because I was a fighter mage and Dude, I fucked a... up so yeah. bad when I was playing that uh, druid. <laughs> yeah. Like I realized after the fact just how But did you have fun? Yes. Then it doesn't matter. Well, I uh 
I definitely abused some of the systems that, uh, uh yeah. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Did you know about the shape-shifting? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I know. <laughs> you should have told me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, did you have fun? You were new to the game. I wasn't going to go heavy on rules because I don't like rules. I like games. I like stories. So, I like things that move the game and the story along. If the mechanics get tweaked, then the mechanics get tweaked. I but yeah, James, every time we went home, he's like, you know that's not how that works, right? And so every week I was determined, I'm going to go through the, the shape-shifting mechanic and I'm going to try and figure it out. And then we'd have a game and it was just fun. So Well, what I should have been doing, and, and this is what I read after the fact, and had you been like, hey, you need to read this again, no. I would have learned every time I shape-shifted, I needed to roll the dice for a night's rest. Not just regain it all. No. You should have told me that. No, then it wouldn't have been as fun. <laughs> you should have told me that. Plus, I was also trying to make you guys a little bit more powerful considering how powerful James was. Because yeah. James is a min-maxer. So you guys got a lot more breaks than he got because his character was so overpowered. So I couldn't he hold you guys to the you know to the same standard otherwise you die constantly there are a lot of big beds that i kind of nerfed because you guys were you know having fun and i wasn't gonna be like all right you're dead like the level of things that i could shape shift into was correct mm -hmm. like i i stayed within that level of whatever my character level was i had to pick from whatever was on that sheet yeah um but yeah, every time I shapeshifted, I should have been rolling a dice for a night's sleep. I know, but I don't care. And I don't think you ever made us roll a night's rest. No. Nope. That's dumb. Yeah. You just had a night's rest. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I... In 3.5, I don't think you had... To roll for a night's rest mm -hmm. if you slept for eight hours. Mm -mm. You had and to roll a d8. That's dumb. Yeah. Again. Painted. It was either a d8 or something that you had to roll to determine how many HP you got back. Oh, yeah. For your night's rest. Mm -hmm. You just let us take everything. In some cases. I don't think you did it all the time. Because, again... It I don't seem to remember ever having to big roll. between you and James. Yeah. And that was kind of the first game that we all played together. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, my only stipulation on my um, Warhammer check was please don't make me lose my hammer in the first round of the game. <laughs> give, me, give me one round <laughs> <laughs> before you make me lose the hammer. <laughs> Nope. And, and then I'm trying to redo my note because I backed out while I was snooping on all the lurkers. But yeah. Um. But I had every intention of doing better the second time. Yeah, we just have never gotten back. Yeah. Thank you. And, but then uh, I read up on how... Oh, I hit post before it was ready. No, 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 you can delete it. Can I? Or edit it. Can I? I don't think I can edit it. I can copy it, but that's it. Hmm. Yeah, oh, in the chat? It. Yeah. Oh, no. No, I cannot. It's already up there. I can copy it and I can keep working on it, but that's it. Yeah. I just, I'm trying to see the little tiny rating because I backed out of the chat so now all the chat's gone. Yeah. That's fine. Seeing the little tiny rating. That is going to finish with if you have a custom option you would like to have printed, please contact us at contact at baylight3d.com mm. for an estimate. 
<sighs> All of these figures can be printed smaller and or bigger. Well, not and bigger. Or bigger. Mm -hmm. Quantum. Yeah, there's, a, there's some there's some um, adjustments we can make. Like uh, we had somebody request that the uh, the haunter be printed larger, and so we worked around it by taking the haunter and um, taking him off the figure and putting him on his own base. Oh, neat. Mm -hmm. He was like, so he wanted the not safe for work. So we took the not safe for work body, combined it with the safe for work head that didn't have the haunter attached. And then we took the base that had the haunter sitting on the tombstone. We took that and took it cool. off yeah. so that the haunter was sitting on the tombstone with the hands. But nice. Yeah, still in the not safe for work. So squeezy, squeezy, grabby, grabby. So uh, yeah, there's there's things that we can do. We can we can make some tweaks, make some adjustments. Ooh. And we can always do custom paint jobs. So if, if you, you see wanna... something and it's green and you want it blue, we can do it yeah, blue. If you want the shiny version of Gardevoir, we've done it quite a few times. Mm-hmm. You want to not save for work, but you're worried about uh, it lasting? We can shellack it. <laughs> I just like the word shellack. 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 Shellack -a -lack -a -lack -a -lack -a. Mm. All of our figures get coated with a protective coating so that they can be cleaned. But Please don't, don't lick them. Don't submerge in water. Wipe with a damp cloth. Mm. Mm. She probably, they probably shouldn't sit in the jar for a long time. You've never heard of the cum jar? Oh, I did hear about the cum jar. Okay. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People are weird. Yeah, they do their things. I don't judge. I mean, I do judge. But I, I judge, I, but I don't. I, I, I do, don't judge but loud. I don't. <laughs> I do, but I don't. Mm. But I do, but I don't. So, whistle, I always thought whistle, it was a whistle, fin, whistle. but apparently it's not a fin. What? Wait, is the hole still up there? Yeah. It takes a bit of paint to fill it. I've been filling it with resin. Yeah. So, even if it's been filled with resin, you still have to fill it? No. These, these ones have not been filled with resin. Oh. I think a certain Samuel probably grabbed these ones. Samuel! Sam so Sam. we think it's part of the curing process of the resin. Uh -huh. Sometimes on, on surfaces that are up, like the, the boobs mm -hmm. and the head, they get these little pinholes from the curing process. And that's part of prep. We just... Uh... Sand them down, fill them up. <laughs> Sand them down, fill them up. It's true. Sand them flat. Flat, flat, flat. So I'll probably be over Wednesday to prep. Well, I Wednesday's guess. a stream. Is it, it is a stream, so I'm going to be over here anyway. I have a virtual, a, a virtual appointment. Okay. At, uh, 2.45. You'll have to walk away. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm no longer having an allergic reaction. And I want to make sure that they documented, um, I would like to chop, 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 chop. Hmm. Because I don't know if she documented that during my last, uh, update. Hmm. And, uh, I definitely need that updated. Mm -hmm. For that one and this one. So that way that's three. But I think that it has to be like three separate occasions over like a six month period or more than six months, six months in between before insurance will pay for it. Really? So wait. Huh? You have to ask three times? No, it has to be documented that it is life affecting. Ah. Yeah. That there is pain. Or discomfort and discoloration and oh, like a whole list of stuff that it of criteria it needs to meet before it goes to medical medically necessary versus 
aesthetically. Mm. Well, it's cosmetic. But whatever. Like some people put a lot of their self worth into that particular aspect, and that's great for them. I mean, I you know do what makes you happy. But I I have no self worth uh, attached to that. All I have are holy jeez, I would like these gone. And that's been since uh, ninth grade. Mm -hmm. I was a late bloomer. Okay. Took forever to get boobs. I thought I was gonna be flat chested forever because I was a skinny mini right before I hit puberty. And then I got all the curves. But yeah. I was never skinny. I think it was out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just moving constantly, and uh, my mom didn't have a car, so we just walked everywhere. Um, as a teenager, I was visiting colleges in Connecticut and visited my mom and my sister, and my then best friend and I walked from. Well, did a walk that I did every day, and. It was one of those things where I would have my headset or whatever on and I would just be where I wanted to be. You know, it's like teleporting. Mm -hmm. um, and I did it as an almost adult and it was a long walk. And I did that at seven. So just barely older than Rowan and I was crossing major highways. Granted, with a crosswalk, but still. It's it's the only humongous highway in that town. And, uh, yeah. Yep. That's my mom. No, I'm, I'm Germanic-filled. I, uh, even, even at my fittest, when I was in the military, I was a big girl. Felt like a linebacker. Just short. Mm. Yeah. I keep forgetting that your dad was adopted. Mm-hmm. We have all these conversations and I'm like, Adopted! And you're like, my dad was adopted. I'm like, adoption's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Ignore that entire rant. <laughs> nah, it's fine. I guess he's cool. He did make all the little I don't know. table numbers for it's, me. It's uh, unknown whether it was my grandma couldn't get pregnant or my grandpa couldn't get her pregnant. Yeah. So they adopted my dad and my uncle. Family is what you make it. Yep. And I once asked my dad, and that was a long time ago, I once asked my dad if he ever was curious about who his parents were and he says no I know who my parents are there you go yeah my parents were stuck with me his parents chose him <laughs> Rowan oh my god I don't know what happened they started asking about um, their conceptions that the, girl, the ladies did Mm. And we were talking about, I think we're, we started out with talking about how Erin didn't know she was pregnant with Abby. She just suddenly went into labor. Like, uh, it was when we we took the trip up to, uh, to Maine to get my sister and her husband and their two kids, Stephanie and Ethan. And um, Erin stepped in as we were about to leave. And she was looking mighty round. And it, it looked like baby round. So I, I told Robin, I, I think she might be pregnant. And Robin's like, no, she's just fat. Because, you know, who, who but your family? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, talked to Chrissy on the way down. And I'm like, hey, so I think Erin's pregnant. But she didn't say anything. So maybe take her to go get a pregnancy test 
And so, you know, Chrissy did what she was supposed to. She, she took her to a pregnancy test. She turned out to be pregnant. Uh, they took her to Planned Parenthood because Planned Parenthood does more than just abortions. Narrow-minded freaks. But, uh, anyway, um, so she got her first ultrasound and they tried to figure out conception and, um, how old the, the fetus was. Yeah. All that fun stuff. And, um, they misjudged it by quite a few months. Mm. Because the next thing we know, Aaron's going into labor and Chrissy and I are running out to Walmart to get her a, um, car seat so she can bring the baby home. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm telling all, all this story to the kids about how, you know, Aaron didn't know she was pregnant and then, voila, baby! And, um, and then Rowan, of course, wants to know how she came about. I'm like, well, your mom and dad really, really wanted you, so they tried for you. And voila, baby. And, um, and of course, poor Katie. She's like, well, what about me? And I'm like, well, you were a surprise. You snuck up on them. <laughs> but yeah. but they just, boy, were they happy to have you. Exactly. And that's how that story always ends. But then again... Rowan, who's very, very smart and a little too smart for her own good, goes, so my mommy won me, but she didn't know she ha was having Abby, and Katie was not planned. <laughs> well, we, we, we don't say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but mommy wanted me, and I'm like, well, I mean, she wanted all of you. We're, we're going to ignore the Facebook video where, like, yeah, we were really disappointed it wasn't a boy. <gasps> oh, dear you, that's on Facebook forever. <laughs> Can't wait till one of her kids has to archive her account and memorialize it. Mm, sees that. And it's just like, ah, oh. so she was a dick. I'm the admin for Scott's. Uh, has anyone tried to contact you pretending to be him yet? I had, um... Oh, God, who was it? Someone who was dead contacted me. I want to say it was the co-worker. I can't think of her name. Mary? I think it was Mary. We can't say anything bad about her because she's dead now, but... Cool. But then we got over that. We were annoyed because she kept inviting herself into uh, whenever we, we would order lunch. And she didn't tip. She didn't believe in tipping. Mm -hmm. And so people had to make up for her tip. And she'd get pissed if you didn't include her in ordering for lunch. Mm -hmm. And so and that, we were new to the department we were not aware of who this person was and she was getting really too upset at people she didn't know. Yeah. And but then then we learned who she was. Right. <laughs> I don't know if she ever stopped with the no tipping thing. Or if we just learned how to kind of make up for it. Mm. I don't remember ever ordering with her. Maybe, I, I thought you were part of the group that was, maybe it was James who was upset with her constantly doing her thing. Because, like, he was right there in her quad. Yeah, he didn't like her. For a while. But then eventually got over it. Yeah, I think he moved desks. <laughs> But, uh, no, nobody's ever pretended to be him. I had somebody do a friend request. Um, and I'm like, hey, did you know my, my brother? And he was like, no, I was looking at something that Gretchen posted and I accidentally hit the friend button. Uh, I'm like, okay. I was just like, okay. Okay. 
But, uh, whatever. Yeah, now I've had um, someone pretending to be my mom friend request me. I've had Aaron, someone uh, took over Aaron's Facebook account, messaged me and wanted to send me a code to help me find their cell phone or pay their cell phone bill or something of that nature. I'm like, you don't know your own sister's phone number. Come on. And she's like, no, she's, uh, she hasn't paid her bill or something and she, her phone got turned off. I'm like, wait, I didn't pay my bill my phone got turned off. <laughs> How are you talking to me? But, yeah. You think you're confusing your stories. I don't think I'm talking to my sister. <sighs> Alright, it is 2.53. We're reaching the end. We did get a lot done during that last couple hours. It's, it's kind of how it goes. Because during it the feels, first yeah. hours, you, you got like a skirt done. Well, during the first few hours, I was painting white. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't obvious what I was doing. Still isn't obvious what you do. <laughs> <laughs> now she doesn't get painted green, does she? Yeah. She doesn't get painted green now. Her head uh -huh. and then her shirt comes down oh. under her boobies. Oh. So that gets green. And her that shirt is never going to fit those boobies. It's very stretchy. It's like that, um, do you remember those scrunchy shirts from the 90s? Like, shh, shh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get me. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I have to do that with my own bra. I feel like everyone that I've ever had to sit next to has had to become accustomed to the boob adjustment. Mm. Sometimes fall out of the bra. Alright, y'all. I think this is where we're gonna cut it. With our single viewer of Kelly. Me. Productive day, right? I don't know. Maybe the late night maybe the late night's not working. Maybe we need to do Saturday earlier. Well, I get out of work at eight. And I gotta put the kids down to bed. So the earliest I could leave is eight thirty. What other day are you off? I am off Wednesday, Thursday, and Sat Sunday. So you're off Sundays. Mm -hmm. So we want to do Sunday day. Just taking care of the kids. I mm. have to talk to Robin. Mm. Because the difference with the streaming day is I'm not making any money on streaming days. Mm. Gotta help it out. And I don't mind helping out, but if it impacts them, then they get all bitchy. Well, we'll figure it out. It impacts me because then I get to go home at, and try and crawl into bed at like three thirty in the morning <laughs> to be up again because of my well, overtime. guys. We're gonna end it here. We'll figure it out if again. If you want a Gardevoir. You would go to? Baylight3D.com Baylight3D.com Or it's sure. <coughs> and if you use our code, you get 15% off all your purchases until November 28th. Baylight Black, right? Baylight Black. Baylight Black. Baylight Black. Bye. And you can do like no. that.